Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and this Saturday I'm going to show you how to paint a gorgeous still life featuring a cat. It's got daffodils, it's got folded fabric, it has so many fun things. I'm doing it around canvas. Of course you can do it on a square. Don't for check, forget to check the community blog or my website blog, which gives you lots of ideas of what to do when I paint on a round canvas, if you feel like being square, because both of those options are completely easy and doable, even if you're new to painting. Now, today is a very special day. If John can show us our desktop. I think we can. On the mic is my husband, John. He is the co-host of my show and also known as Stunt Hands. So if you guys are going to be entering today's contest, that's the answer. I like to make it super hard <laughs> for everybody. So again, John, co-host, also known as Stunt Hands, is the answer to the giveaway. <laughs> so during the show, uh, we're going to be running a giveaway for one lucky winner on Cat Still Life Weekend to win a number eight Art Sherpa Cat's Tongue. This is open globally. We do have some small conditions. The mods have the link on where to enter, and all you've got to do is pick the correct phrase and be here when we announce your name. Now, that's key. If you're going to want to enter and you want to be here for your chance to win, you've got to be present and you've got to have a, a way for our moms to contact you. and get, We'll do that through the website, but they're going to organize that. So that's how we're going to do that. So be sure that you're here if you want a chance to win one of these. You do have to have like a, a place to send mail. So, you know. A mailbox some 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 sort of mailing system where you are mm. <laughs> that we can access now this is today's reference i'm really excited about it because i think this is a really pretty piece it's one i've been wanting to do for a long long time um i'm doing this on a round surface and today i am going to add wishes to saturday's painting i'm going to wish uh, good luck to our contest entries Right. I hope the exact right person um, gets the brush. I'm also going to wish um, there's been a discussion post on my personal Facebook page to all of you who have uh, who are family members who've been affected by COVID. You've got a family member in a hospital. You've lost a family member in a hospital. I'm wishing you support and love and for you guys to be surrounded by the things that you need, especially as you're going through this. Uh, it's, I think it's very important, no matter where you live, no matter who you are. I just wish that for you. Also wishing f that we don't forget that this is still going on in Louisiana. Having lived in a hurricane state, I can tell you that the trouble is still going on even after the news cameras go and the water recedes. It's still happening. And they have COVID. So it's like lots of extra, extra. So we're wishing them well-being. Mm. I'm going to take... This is my round. It's got a coat of gesso on it because it was raw wood. And I'm going to take some burnt umber, right, which is this nice brown color here. And I'm going to paint the whole surface brown. Super hard first step. Super hard first step. If you guys are, you know, following along and doing that first step, that's the very hardest first step. Uh, Linus Art says, seeing an error in the link. What is the error on the link? It goes directly to our website. If there the mods just could, dropping it again there. Are you dropping sure. it again? Yeah. Okay. Let us know whenever there's a problem like that. Um, and our mods will kind of let you know, especially CAD Red. Pay attention to CAD. So that butterfly will let you know uh, when we're getting close to closing the entries so we can pick a winner and announce during the live show. All right. We're going to just paint this whole surface brown. If you, oh, goodness, look at this. My gesso was not dry. <sighs> I let it air dry, and I'll tell you right now, it's been very interesting with the wood rounds because it does, it's not going to hurt it in any way. Um, they take a little longer to dry than canvas or prepared masonite boards. Hmm. It really hasn't been a problem, and I don't mind, and they're so economical and easy to get, I've just decided it's a sort of, yeah, it's fine. Kind of problem. Just adding that brown everywhere. Acrylic really likes to stick to acrylic. And I don't want you guys to get confused that gesso is somehow required for every canvas or surface. Let's just really break it down so it doesn't feel mysterious. Gesso is just a surface prep. That's all it is. 
Um, can you tell if we can substitute these colors? You can always substitute colors. Um, you can use your closest color to what I'm using. You may find that you get some different mixes. Like if you were to use ultramarine and cad yellow, you wouldn't get very bright greens. Um, I have a blog with substitutions on the community tab right now on the community tab that you can read. It has lots of color substitutions and explanations as to why, not to mention paint companies that I do recommend. Now, you may have a paint in your area that I don't have access to. Like there's a whole bunch of paints in India that I don't have access to that maybe I would recommend if I had access to them, but I don't. So just be aware because I might not recommend a paint in your area. It doesn't mean it's not a great paint. I might just not have ever used it before. You know, so take everything, even from me with the proverbial grain of salt, because there's always conditions. I feel like sometimes as influencers, we almost have uh, too much credibility. <laughs> and I want you guys to always have that freedom, that freedom of thought or experience to be like, you know, she's probably just never tried my awesome brand of paint, which is super awesome. And I might be like, yeah, I've never tried your awesome brand of paint, which is super awesome. Let's call your paint awesome a whole bunch of times. Shall we, John? All right. By the way, John is stunt hands, co-host of the show, for your entry. I, I have very weird uh, things. And if you guys were entered into last night's contest, I'm so sorry about my migraine and that I had to move the show. I just could not get... These lights are very bright, and that was not happening last night. No, it was not. <laughs> it wasn't. I was like, can I paint in the dark and whisper? If we, I could paint in the dark and whisper, we can have a show. We could do that, but it would not <laughs> be the show that you think terrible show. It is. Stephanie Willis, thank you so much. I really appreciate the Super Chat. Now, today, guys, on Super Chat, it does not impact your entry. We... You, Super Chat is separate from that. You don't have to subscribe. You don't have to do anything. Then go by and enter. So it would be really nice if you guys did subscribe. <laughs> It'd be cool. I'd appreciate it. Also help you get notifications. All right. I am making sure that there's just a nice buttery coat of paint. That's why I'm taking this extra time on this brown layer. And also sometimes I like you guys to see me do something so you can see what I'm going through. That way, if you're going through something, it doesn't feel weird or unfamiliar. That's nice, isn't it? Mm -hmm. The only place that's aggravating me is where that gesso is kicking back up. And also where that hair is, which I'm taking out of the canvas. Because I don't want it there. The proverbial hair in the canvas. Isn't there always one? Ooh, it doesn't want to come up, does it? Always one. It's always one. Ugh. All right, fine. This is this weird way I get up hairs, but you can see it's clearly an issue, and it won't come up even with my nail. All right. You know what I say to that, my friends? Genetic material for future generations to study. <laughs> That's what that is. Because it's not going to hurt my results. So at this point, I'm going to just let it be. I don't have a pair of tweezers here, which is how I would normally get that out if I was going to get it out. I'm going to dry this. Uh, guys, definitely drop the contest link. Um, it's on the Art Sherpa blog if you're looking for it. Uh, drop the contest link so everybody can enter. Uh, there's not as many entries as last night, so be sure you enter in both so you have double the chances to mm -hmm. win. But remember, you got to be here. Okay, so now I'm going to go back over here, do, 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 looking at the chat stuff. So what I would say is if dude, my chat may be stuck... It was doing some weird stuff. I'm going to refresh the page. Refresh. If your chat does something weird, like doesn't scroll or something like that, you just refresh the page and it'll pop right back up. Um, also, while you're refreshing your page, don't, for click, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the little bell and then the all so you don't miss any of these free cool tutorials that we give. And don't forget, while you're pushing that subscribe and that bell button to not push the heat button on your air mover because heat is bad for paint and especially acrylic paint which is made of basically plastic it's an it's an acrylic polymer polymer that's why they call it acrylic paint so it doesn't do well with heat just in general now if you're using a pro paint 
this is not such a big deal. And you'll talk to your propane people and they'll be like, we don't know why the Air Sherpa is making such a big deal about heat until they use a really basic student paint. And then all of a sudden, the student paints do respond very adversely to heat. So they can do things like color shift and they can get sticky and they can delaminate. So just, Are you talking about painting on photos? No, just oh. using heat on student oh. versus pro paints and blah, blah, blah. I blah, dropped blah. my um, reference. You dropped your Over reference. the side. I can go or Drop you can go. Reference. But you're stunned hands, so you should go. There was a question from Bobby from Aberdeen, Scotland. Hi, Scotland, about how do you paint over a photograph? First, let me say painting over a photograph is actually a great practice to get into because you can learn to mix better colors. You can learn to uh, match shapes and sizes and get a sense of the way things relate to each other on a flat surface. So I highly recommend it. But it can be difficult to do depending on um you know what you're doing in that specific instance so one thing you can do is you can try to paint just directly on it and if it'll take the paint and i've done that before it's fine but it might not take the paint well and so the trick after that would be to spray it with a seal like a varnish an acrylic varnish and then you can go over it with clear gesso and that'll give you a canvas like surface on your photograph the clear gesso is a little milky, so that's only a good idea if you're planning to repaint the entire photograph or jacle or surface that you're using. And no, that isn't cheating. That is an art process. I really appreciate everyone's well wishes. Thank you, Barbara Summers. And we'll definitely, when we're at the end, we'll do our thank you to our super chat. I so appreciate that. And I really appreciate your... Uh, uh, words Barbara just drop by to say hello now are you guys in for the contest is everybody entering for their chance to win a cat's tongue because this is global you guys told us hey we don't love it when it's just US based you, you have a world community and we really really want you to be able to ship everywhere and we heard you and we listened and we are doing that well we're gonna try at least we're gonna try <laughs> now I'm gonna come here to the midpoint if I can of my surface and I'm, it's a 12 inch surface, so I'm going to come everywhere and try to make sure that, um, and I'm doing this in multiple places, so I'm just sure that my center point is my center point, if that makes sense, right? Just making sure. So that's a pretty good, for sure, center point. Because this is wood, I don't know how they were cut. It might be a little bit uneven. And I'm going to make two cross lines. I've been doing a really complicated paint with my patrons of some peonies and some stuff, and I didn't have my cross lines in. And you know what happened? My bottle got big. <laughs> so Ooh. today I'm using crossbars. And I'm also going to give that to my patrons later because it's clearly helpful. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> Hi. So uh, Moderator Cad Red, if they're having trouble getting into the entry on the blog website, remember there's that link that you can grab that is the mobile-friendly link. If they can't get to an embedded website, they should be able to get to the website. Mary Youngblood, how do you enter the contest? Well, you just go by to the latest blog with this video because there's two giveaways this weekend. This is the Saturday giveaway with the round, and you select the correct answer. John is stunt hands. That's the hint. If, if you already watched the show, you knew the answer. I'm not trying to mess with you guys, but you do have to be here. And be present to reach out and connect with the moderators if you win so we can get to you. Kirsten, thank you so much. I appreciate that so, so much. This is a Dritz chalk tool. And it makes it really easy for me to uh, sketch on canvas and different surfaces. And so I can kind of put my, my objects in a little bit easier, you know, and really sort of see where they are in relationship to each other. So this is going to help me be pretty close to my reference in the type of shaping and everything that I'm going to have. And where objects fit in this space. That doesn't mean that I won't be, as I'm painting, changing some things. Because I might. But it will help me kind of still use this as a good reference for what is going on. He's got a nice little kitty body going off and a little kitty paw kind of coming up here, right? Look at my weird little kitty paw. I am just lightly sketching stuff in. And the reason that I lightly sketch stuff in, let's put in his face. So we're finding his line, which is on a three-quarter. Everything okay, babe? Yeah. Okay. 
And then we're going to come across for his eyes so that we know where to put his kitty face. Today we're kind of doing this to sort of help you. You've got a traceable. If you don't want to draw today, the traceable is there. But if you do want to draw, go ahead and. Today is definitely a two cup of coffee and traceable day for me. Is it a two cup of coffee and traceable day for you? I will be traceabling, not whatever it is you're doing with your free hands that I could not comprehend. That I don't magical. Know. I don't know why I did this today. It was, you know what's, what it is, is that when I have uh, the migraines, it gets me behind on my work. So then a lot of my prep work that I do for the show, I cannot do. But sometimes that's good because that gives you something to sort of see me go through. And be like, oh, she goes through some interesting stuff, too. Watch you struggle. Watch me struggle. Right? And it's important sometimes to see how hmm. certain things get worked out. Let's see. If A I lot can... of times you can look at things like where is the eye in relationship to the ear, right? Can you see that those lines kind of line up? And where the nose lines up. So you want to look for that kind of stuff, like the eye and the nose, the way that they connect in this way is an important thing to know. And knowing that the, the nose kind of has a little round zone here and the chin has a little round zone there is super duper helpful. Hopefully we will not get a cross-eyed cat today, but I'm okay with it. Huh. <laughs> Whatever we get. The other object that I'm going to want to kind of talk about in here is I have a ground, don't I? I have the object that everything is sitting on, and it is far below uh, his ear and body. So I try to line up using his body to sort of give me a sense of where that object would be. Not too bad, right? That's a straight line. We can all draw one of those. And I'm going to bring... Oh, wait. Hold on. Shh. Nice curve line here for the vase. And then we're going to take some of these fabric folds, right? And we're going to draw those down. That you might have. Now, sometimes okay. you can just kind of loosely say, all right, these things are in this space. And kind of pay attention to how they enter and exit on your surface. And then work some of that out as you're painting it. Because you'll be making adjustments. Now we know that the daffodils and flower arrangement kind of takes up this space here, less here, and some blue here. So we need to know where that is. That lets us know the background is in this zone and this zone here. You can kind of see how we broke that down on our surface. By the way, you've got lots of time to enter. <laughs> there was a question. Mm. Let's see here if I can go. And then maybe. What's the number for phone text? Is Heather Campbell. 33222. See, that's what I was going to do. We're such a team. We, we are that. such a cool team. Now, my background definitely has some brown in it. I see some yellow in it as well. I think probably more yellow ochre than a brighter yellow. I'm putting out zinc white. I'm putting out yellow ochre. I will put out some more burnt sienna, and I'm going to put out some Mars black. Um, I'm going to do that, and then I may add some titanium white in a minute to give myself a stronger, more robust white, because sometimes we need that. Not all the time, but sometimes. And measures. Do you know a Frida Kahlo um, free-handed? Or was she, how did she do her artwork? I don't remember. I don't remember either. I, I'm going to say off the top of my head, I think that she did a series of sketches and there were some dreams yeah. involved. And um, I don't remember. it was very stream of consciousness. But... She's probably one of the most, one of the most studied painters of her generation. She's certainly one of the most important female painters of that hundred years. So believe you me, there are people who wrote their entire master thesis on that. So that information is out there. Here's what I can say. I, I, I don't remember off the yeah. top of my head. This is titanium white. <laughs> hmm? Yeah, I, I can say that I don't remember in any of the lectures 
them talking about her using tracing or any other transfer method. No, so, no, I believe that she looked at herself in a mirror. But I believe, I, if yeah. I remember that correctly, and then there were some dream journals involved, uh, poetry, possibly some drug use. So, well, <laughs> some of the scholars, something like that, something like that. But I'm not entirely sure. Like, there's history. a whole process. That's art history for you. Um, I'm unable to remove all my chalk residue from my paintings. Is this a technique or chalk issue? That really is about pressing too hard or um, having the paint still be soft. And or, so you really need to have your paint be fully and completely cured and cool before you chalk. Waxy chalk, too. Oh, yeah, and waxy chalk. Like, it needs to be chalk, only chalk. If it's got wax in it, that's... Well, that's an oil pastel. Totally different tool. <laughs> okay. This is a number one ultimate varnish. This is a Princeton over mop. Over mop. These are essentially the same, guys. Um, I really prefer this brush, uh, and I have several of them. I'm going to do my background with this technique, and first I'm going to light load up with my zinc white. That's my transparent white, and I'm loading up. I'm going to get a smidge of my yellow into that, a smidge of my brown. and start to paint right here at this part of the cat. Now, it's going to be very important, guys. When you're painting here, you're going to want to paint into your flowers where you know your flowers are going to go. And even kind of around your vase. It's okay if you paint into your vase, if you paint into things. Don't stress about that. Kind of see as we're layering what we're getting going here. And I'm going to paint into my stems a bit. And that's really because I want to be, able, I don't want to have to paint the negative space between my stems, right? So the stems being the object, the space between the stems being negative space. So it's best if I really get my background stuff kind of in. Let's load up with some yellow ochre and some burnt umber. I don't know why everyone keeps burning all these pigments, but they do. And then I'll add a little black into it to kind of gray it. I like the zinc white because it allows me to lighten a value, distinctly lighten a value, without changing the intrinsic color that it is. Let's get that background all in there, all in there, all in there. All right. Hi, everyone. Super late. Starting my morning here. Thank you for bringing the donuts, Mod Cad Yellow. I appreciate that so much. What can I do about arm and hand pain I get for painting every day? Well, first is really check about where you're positioning your body. Just like anybody that works at a desk a lot or a tennis elbow or anything, repetitive motions can create joint inflammation. And so it's very important that you're sitting in a position that doesn't cause you to extend your arm in a way that's uncomfortable and inflames your joints. You want to make sure you have the appropriate rest and supports. Um, it can also help to wear like the elbow bands and shoulder bands that support your joints. And also, and I know it feels silly, go in and tell your doctor you're having this pain because chances are you need to be on an anti-inflammatory regime. And you need a doctor to help you with that. They won't, I promise you, I, I had the hardest time going into my doctor to tell him that I was having joint pain from painting because I felt so silly. I'm continuing to add white as I go in. And I'm really glad I did go talk to him. <laughs> he didn't laugh, so that was a relief. But I was sure he was going to laugh. John was there. He had to convince me to go in. Because I was like, they're going to make fun of me who has pain from painting. We but do. Sports performance injury. It's a sports performance injury, guys. You can use any brush that you want for this technique. I just really like these soft blending brushes. I think that they are super helpful for this type of thing. And you can see how very, very easily, you know, you can get a nice dramatic background going. And I love what the zinc will do and everything. You know, from another perspective, jump, 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 jump. you're going to do a jump. thousand wrist reps today. I am. And you're just going to do it without, like, any warm-up. 
without any warm up. I just sit down and I'm like, but, oh, I'm painting today. Well, I had a little warm up because I was doing some. But for some the for the average person out there in the world, you don't think about that. Like you don't just get up and say, I'm going to go run a hundred yards and track today and just like go do that without stretching or warming up or like maybe a few of us do, but not like you know the average person. So if you're thinking I'm just going to take up painting, you probably should take it from a respectful place of saying you got to build up some muscle memory, some strength, you're going to have new muscles being used. So Isn't that that nice how that blends guys. That's the same brush, but dry. It's always nice to have a soft brush to paint with and then a soft dry brush to blend with because you can get some really great effects as long as the paint is still wet. And I will rinse those out and put those aside and sip my coffee says we have to answer before it uh what says we have to answer before this video you guys should be able to just go answer done hands co-host don Mm. answer (laughs) uh when the contest ends moderator cad red will pick a winner and let us know and we will announce during the show you've got to be here to win if you're not here we're gonna pick another winner Mm. hi sk thank you so much for the super chat we really appreciate it be sure to stay to the end when we give you guys a special thank you Mm mm-hmm All right, so we've got this all put in, and I highly recommend drying this layer because you're going to want to move around and rest your hand, and if it's not dry, it's not going to be fun. It's not going to work. No, it won't be joyful. All right. All right. So you guys have heard the thing about, you know, don't use heat. That's pretty, you know, we got that covered. Oh. Thank you, SK. Thank you for all the guys out there supporting us and gals and dogs and porcupines and raccoons. I know we have a lot of fur friends out there, too. So thank you guys for supporting us and helping make this be a happy paint family. You know, genuinely mean that. We really appreciate you guys coming and joining us. It's super fun to have this big crew of people to hang out with and to paint and talk about things with. So, um... You know, appreciate you being with us. Hmm. Oh, let me turn you back on here. Painting canvas pads, says Adrian Clement. I think it's perfectly fine. Just make sure that your pad is... Like, here's my tips on canvas pads. Either remove the paper and tape it down or tape the edges so that you don't get paint throughout the pad, but it's perfectly acceptable, easy to frame, and an excellent surface to paint on. Hmm. Feel no shame in your canvas pad. It's actually they're really good. Uh, So sorry about the cat. I know someone's like, what happened to the cat last night? I had a migraine, and it was really bad, and I just couldn't sit in these lights and teach you guys to paint. And John felt it was silly to sit in the dark and try to teach you guys to paint. <laughs> he was like, that's, that's not going to be super effective. You know what I did, babe? Mm. I went and got burnt umber, but I forgot to get burnt sienna off of my cart. Can you grab burnt me some burnt sienna, sienna off of my cart? I've added oh, all to marine blue. And this is a really great color to add to our mix. No, burnt no, sienna? no. No, no, from the good paint. Oh, <laughs> And he's like, no, nah. there's some down low too. So you can do down the top low. tubes or you can do the low tubes. I, here's like you, it. often have a uh, paint that I've got to deal with. Okay. There's a good bird sienna. I'm going to just use this filbert. This is an artist love Sorrento filbert. There you go. Um, I see, have filberts. I have, actually, you, you know what? Maybe I should use my cat's tongue since we're giving one away. See, should I use considers. my cat's tongue since we're giving one away? You're I will sure. use this brand new cat's tongue. Since brand we're going to be new. giving one away to one lucky winner. Show us what does it do. Let's um, let me show you all the cool things that it does, so you understand you why it's super exciting to get them. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna paint this dark ground of the wood. I am going into where I have both my vase, right, and my um. That, and then I'm going to come here and also paint this very dark color. So this is my burnt umber and my black. Very important. We'll paint this dark surface. Because this is the wood. 
get the cat is on on the still life. Acrylic paintings have this, what I call the ugly stage, hmm. where things are just kind of in their beginning phases and you're blocking in and it just looks like an amorph. Oh, thank you, Sylvia. I appreciate that so much. Right? And remember that, um, don't forget to enter. So you can enjoy that fun of a cat's tongue. So I'm going to take a little of my brown and burnt sienna. And this, if you've never seen one of these, is a grass comb. Is that what you rake your front yard with? Yes, it is. And it makes if a um, really nice kind of textural you're... effect. You can use a fan brush too, guys. If you're gnomon. But on Saturdays, I like to demonstrate stuff for you guys can, so you can see them even if you've never run into them. I'm adding a little white to that to create that wood grain. Whoop. From the wood that's under him. It's just a little bit of a textural effect that you can get. I'm in my zinc white. And again, you can use a little fan brush. You can use a dry brush. It's really. Find whatever you choose to use. Don't, don't be stressed about the brush you use. But what you want is a dry brushing effect that leaves a rough wood texture that you can see. to come in with a little dark color kind of blend that out knock that back and it does just sort of make wood for us doesn't it see how that's going what do you guys think Kimberly like Sullivan it. thank you so much so now remember, if you're entering for the brush, you're entering to win the brush, I'm going to grab some burnt sienna and add it to this. Um, you've got to be here when we announce your name. You have to live somewhere on planet Earth that receives mail. That's very important. And this yes. is not affiliated with YouTube in any way. All right, how do we feel about that wood? I'm pretty happy with that. We just, it's a very dark value and we can come back later when we want to and refine it, but this at least gives us something to work on. The next thing that I've got to paint is the vase. And I like to paint things in the way that they're layered. So like the flowers are behind the cat and the cat is in front of the scarf. So sometimes I'm inclined to paint things sort of in the, uh, what, you're looking at me funny. No, I was just thinking, SpaceX is delivering to the space station. So as long as you're like, <laughs> no, we're not delivering. To, well, actually, yeah. If an astronaut, if you want to, br actually, if you're an astronaut and you're in space and you want a brush, I guess we would just give you one because thank you for your service to mankind. Well, no, they got to win it because I got to work with like Mr. Musk and see how much it cost, cost <laughs> to get one. of Because last time I checked, it was like $25,000 a pound. So to get a brush into orbit could cost me between five and $6,000. Okay. I don't want to do that. So I'm well, taking a little bit of my ultramarine blue and I'm going to come at first to the side of this vase, kind of creating a real sense of a dark value. I'm using my number eight cat's tongue and I'm keeping it on the edge so that I can curve the stroke and get a nice sharp edge. This is our first dark value. I'll be happy. Don't lose your whole cat though when you're painting in your in your vase and we know we've got fabric coming down here but I do want to paint it back so that when I layer the fabric it is seamless to that space. Just a dark value right? 
Then we're going to take a little bit of our burnt sienna. And I'm going to come in and add some of this nice brown quality to the vase. On the edge of the brush, I'm just going to dust back and forth to help it blend. Gives us a nice blend. You can always come back with your blue. And start to paint that kind of in. But we do want that sense that things are brown and bright and vibrant. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to tapping in a little more brown. I have a really great like a soapbox to let you come stand on here in a minute. Oh, I have a soapbox? You have, you, there's a soapbox waiting for you to step up on it. You know me, I love a soapbox. How big is a soapbox? It's a two step soapbox. Is it a two step soapbox? Yeah, when you're right. ready. You to finish, finish your. Finish uh, your they're wondering if you can show the reference picture. Yeah. Yeah. I can work on that. Do you want that right? Just. I, that was just a question. All right. What's my soapbox? Okay. So. Sulu was saying, just wanted to make sure that everybody knows, um, and trying to bring some attention to this issue. She severed her thumb, uh, thumb nerve on a glass palette the other day. It was um, popped out of a picture frame, and it shattered. I'm and, so sorry. Yeah, so. I have really tried to get messaging out there. I am very angry at the teachers going out and recommending that as a tip. It is dangerous. Sorry. But well, to see some. I, I warned I, you guys. See, this is a two-step soapbox. <sighs> so, like. I Everybody out there who's a creator, they deserve clicks. They deserve to grow. But you don't deserve to grow in an unsafe way at the expense of your community. So, Period. So here's what. Online, sometimes things are very exciting. You know, you guys know like the different things on Pinterest and on Instagram. They get a lot of virility. And one of the most popular ones is this hack where you take glass out of a regular picture frame and turn it into a glass palette. And sometimes they have some consideration where, like, you duct tape the edge and put it on some cardboard. They have weird it little things. It does not matter. None of it matters. It is super dangerous to do. Talk to anybody that works with glass, like a glazier, like a okay. fireman, yeah. like anybody, and they will tell you that Just, at any point, any of that glass can shatter and cut you seriously. Thank I, you, Kathy Warren. I'm sorry to have such a strong reaction, but I... I, I have I do posts about this and any, and like in my group we actually have a warning if anyone was like, you know, let's use glass from a picture frame and a palette, not to shut anybody down or make I don't expect students to know this. You don't need to know this. Teachers should know this. Bloggers should know this. If you're putting a tip out there, I guess it doesn't really matter that it doesn't work, but it does really matter if it could hurt people. You've got to be responsible and say, hey, you know. This tip isn't worth the clicks, I guess is what I'm saying. And so, yes, be so super careful. And John's right. It's very triggering for me. Here's why. Because I, as a young know-it-all, was like totally messing. Like I would pull the glass out of our frames when I was reframing stuff. And my mom had said, you should be careful with that. And I wasn't. And I got hurt. Um, picture frame glass. Yep. is something that you should treat carefully. Yeah, you should use the online safety recommendations when you're pulling glass out of a picture frame and you're putting it back in. It is not safety glass. Now, what I will say is my, <sighs> my experience, I'm trying to find a good place to put this. <laughs> yeah, I think down here is okay for right now. I'll move it around as we need to. But, <laughs> just so, like out of my body. Just real quick, guys. If I'm you put some phthalo blue out and try to find my calm, yo. If you have any question about whether or not you will cut yourself when working with glass, ask anyone who's worked with glass, and they will tell you it's... I'll move a, a, the ultramarine blue down. It's not if, it's when. Yeah, it is not if, it is when. If you'd like to have a glass palette, um, I guess the only hack I've saw, I, I, I saw was like when people use stuff that's made for the kitchen like a, a cutting board or a microwave tray that was made for the kitchen because that's tempered. Um, but really, honestly... Safety glass. You're looking safety for glass. Safety glass. And on, my recommendation is one that's made for that because if you think about it, you pick up the pellet and you pull it down, you're going to have to like use a razor blade on it. There's a lot you do to that pellet that's very active. 
Um, so I would say get a glass palette. A good one is New Wave. I don't even have an affiliate link here for it. I'm just saying it's a good palette. I have some of them. They're good. We did a video about it, trying to warn people because, you know, we would get asked this like all of the time. And, and it's not any specific person. It's like, it's like, it, it, it's like a, it's like a cold. It just spreads. It like starts on Instagram. It starts on Pinterest. It gets on YouTube. I've seen it on Facebook. Um, and I do hold the teachers who share it responsible because it is our job to be responsible and think about the things we're telling our students, especially online, especially these days. Influencers have to be present and aware about what they're saying because you're impacting real people's lives. Mm -hmm. I know I'm normally very zen, but it's just that's when it really gets to me. It really gets to me. It yeah. really gets to me. There's there's a bunch of like people going, Oh yeah, glass is like it just it's <sighs> Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. And and the students you shouldn't have to know that. It's our job to know that if we're if if we're sitting there showing you how to do something, a teacher should like here's one. Don't heat your paint with torches. That will make you sick. Mm, fire bad. There is a special resin that is made to work with torches. It tells you on the package, but your acrylic paint is not. So if you're paint pouring, that should not be a tip out there. Remarkably that is enough, very dangerous and can hurt people's health. That stuff's called art resin. Yeah, it, art resin. It, and it works. It's very awesome, art resin. I put out some phthalo blue and some ultramarine blue, and I'm calming down from my soapbox, and I'm so sorry you were cut. I'd, I'm so sorry you were cut. I didn't know it was a soapbox that was on fire. No, that this for me because well, because I hear from this is the first. There was a mother I've... that wrote me, and her child came this close to being seriously cut, and I think that that was my trigger, trigger moment of like, that's it. Children are now being hurt. I'm gonna <laughs> lose it. Because <laughs> usually, you know, I don't do this stuff, but I'm just like, this is such a big one where your safety's involved. It's a big deal. I'm calming down now. Breathe. I deeply. think you need to microwave my coffee. I need a sip of coffee. <laughs> I'm gonna miss my this thing. Is, this is so this is so good. I'm All so right. glad I'm giving a brush away today because this show needs some positivity. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you on the overhead and you can paint away while I'm okay. Warm I'm you gonna up. get my brush uh, wet here and I'm gonna start laying in my wonderful fabric and I'm gonna take my ultramarine and my phthalo blue and mix them together and we're going to put the line coming from behind the cat down to the table that's a little more in shadow, right? This is the darker of the blue of the fabric that we're dealing with, right? It's okay to come into where your cat is a little bit where you expect to paint your cat because that way the fur can layer delicately over the top of this surface. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you, Tina Young. Tina says, don't be apologized for being passionate about safety. When you guys write me and something happens to you and it's easily avoidable, it really gets to me because I feel like I know so many of you and, you know, so many of you have touched my lives in actually a very personal way. And so it's like, and it's something so easy that we can do as teachers, as people online, you know, as bloggers, as uh, Instagrammers is to also include that safety information. Now, so this is quite dark and it's blue. I'm going to come in maybe initially with my zinc here, and I'm going to come in and just pop the beginning of a little bit of highlight along that edge, just the beginning. It's not really showing there in a way that I would like. So I'm going to wait until I can do it with the um, with the titanium white. That's just the ultramarine. I'll come in and highlight that in a second. Now. I like to, when I'm painting folded fabric, if you've never painted folded fabric before, to me, and it's always been my strategy, is to find the folds, find the darkest shadows, and just duplicate those shapes, and then put in the mid-tones, and then the highlights, and then find my deepest shadows and my brightest highlights to get my fabric in. You gonna go again? Go again. Oh. It needs another microwave, my dove. And a stir. So let's find another shadow shape. Let's play this game. Let's find our shadow shapes and where they go and what happens. So next to this, there's this bit of folded fabric and then next to it is a shadow, right? So we're going to paint this. 
And it comes around. There's definitely a double fold, but this shadow has a wide spot, goes thin, and then comes out wide again. Now I may come back in and paint a couple things about that differently, but I'm just getting that general gesture in. Oh, thank you, Anna. I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. Oh, Sulu, it is fantastic that you brought it up. Bringing up studio safety is such a good thing to do. I am so glad you bring it up, and I wish more people would speak up, especially where it comes around, especially with online education, right? Because there's so much stuff out there, and there's very little oversight to say this is good information, this is bad information, this is safe information, this is unsafe information. Of course we know that Tide Pods are not a good idea to swallow. But you can't count on kids to know that if their favorite influencer swallows Tide Pods or 10 online, right? So it's just about being... Break my brain, don't talk about Tide Pods. <laughs> but she was just saying, she was sorry she brought it up, but oh, always no, bring me. up studio safety. If you're impacted by something, you know, it's like when I tell you guys about cadmium. I have, ne like, I always tell you guys about cadmium. You might have an allergy to any of these paint products. You always need to read your safety stuff. And while it's true that Artist Cadmium is coated and it isn't bioavailable, you should not eat it or breathe it ever. Mm -hmm. It's not good for you. To eat, don't breathe or eat any of your paint. Just, just don't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, Colleen wants to know, is Cinnamon enjoying using the wood rounds versus the round canvases more? Yes. You are. Ooh, I am. Good to know. So I, I enjoy the surface much more. Why? Um, I found the inexpensive canvases, uh, for me, were, they just didn't really, they didn't have a nice surface that I enjoyed painting on, whereas these particular wood ones really did, and, and they were cheap, and I love that. Not that I'm cheap, but it's just nice when something inexpensive is, is nice to use. It's just a beautiful, solid surface to paint on. It's, it, you know, it's been quite good so far. I'm going to bring that shadow down. All right, and come here. And then there's sort of one in here, so I'll get that in here. And then we know there's a shadow that we're going to be dealing with as the fabric folds, right? Mm-hmm. We can paint that in there. And then, of course, you have a bit of a shadow when the fabric goes off. Everything that's near where the kitty is should have a bit of a shadow. And under the paws, of course. Little shadow coming out in a triangular shape from the paw. And so this is really what you're doing. You're just finding those shadows in the fabric and you're folding the fabric by finding those shadows. We did this a bit in red. Uh, where did I buy my wood rounds? I bought them online on Amazon. Um, I'll get a link. John will give you the link. They were not expensive at the time. I think they were 23 for a dozen. Don't, don't worry. I'm going to share everybody a link. Don't. I'm just telling you the price so that just in case yeah, Amazon yeah. Jocks, jacks it up. You're not like, oh, my gosh, it's $50. It was cheap when I bought it, but you know how Amazon is. But you can just make these second. from your local hardware store. If you, if you have a handy-dandy person in your life who has, like, tools and jigs and things, it can make your wood rounds for you. I don't know if there's a place you can just get them cut. Is there, John? Um, they're kind of hard to do that with. Okay. Give me just a, two seconds, and I'm getting my proper link. I'm going to go ahead and start putting in some of the lighter fabrics, which I'm going to take a little of my phthalo green into my blue mixture. And I'll go ahead and get my zinc white into that, just so we're lighting it, but not so much. And then I'm going to come back and paint some of the highlights that I see going on. And I'm just going to pay very close attention to the shapes that I'm observing. And so this is a nice little kind of curved round shape. That's not too bad. Sometimes in art, it's really just about breaking a thing down.
just breaking that thing down here and there. And then, you know, where you can. Where's your phone at? I don't know where my phone is at. Lesage. <laughs> I have no idea where my phone exists. Unfortunately, my phone has all this two-step authentication. I'll be right back. So sometimes not having it does make it a bit of a, a challenge for everybody. You know, and initially, you know, I'm just locking in. You can make adjustments with your round later, but it's just nice to get certain things sort of blocked in. Come in on the edge. All right. There's a nice sort of little shape there, and then this comes around here like that. And I see a little fold that comes from under his paw. And is shaping back, has a bit of a curve back. And then, of course, this bit of dark little shape there. So we're just kind of capturing those little bits of fabric. Um, I have come to hate two-step authentication, says Diane. I know what you mean, Diane, but you guys know how I'm getting trolled really badly on Facebook. So to put in those content claims, um, I had to give my email, and now suddenly Facebook <laughs> is writing me all the time saying that my page is going to be taken down for violations of misinformation about coronavirus or some some stunts and i'm like yeah i don't really post about that on my page at all so i was like and also the emails are wrong but they try to make it look just like facebook and that's how they got a hold of it so those two-step authentications prevent those crazy people from getting into your stuff and you don't want them in your stuff are you just not uh, signed into amazon that's okay Listen, guys, you know what we'll do? I will post the wood rounds in the pinned comments. I will pin it in the comments after the show. I'm perfectly happy to share with you where I got this. I'm now taking my titanium white, and I'm going to come here very carefully on the edge here and pop this little bit of highlight in. I'm also going to come up over the bit of that blue and pop that little highlight in. And taking that in there and maybe a little bit of that highlight there. And so see how we're just going and finding these little bits? That's what you're doing. You're finding your little bits. Don't try to paint the whole thing. Break it down. Break down what you've got. What other brush apart from fan brush could give me grass and fur texture like a fan? The grass comb. The grass comb is fantastic. Uh, the ruby satin. Uh, Filbert grass comb is awesome. I just recently started it. You guys are going to see the fan brush series first. That starts Sunday. But, um, and don't miss that. Don't miss the new series. Don't miss it. It's five minutes of your life, and it's going to teach you something about art you didn't know in five minutes. Um, it's going to be like every day. It's awesome. It's like a, like, a, like a quick cup of coffee and an art technique. But this is a grass comb, and I've been looking at all the different grass brushes for up series grass quest. And this was really one of my favorites by far. You know, other than that, you can get a hog bristle brush and um, whew, start to uh, use that. I'm going to come here and I see, feel like I see. It's okay. I told him I would leave it in the comments after the show. And it'll be okay. And I don't know. I'll try to find my brush. Oh, I know where it is. It's in my purse hanging in the closet from our last trip out. Mm -hmm. From the mammogram, <laughs> the trip. It's probably dead, but I had it for when we went to go do the mammogram. Be sure and take care of your physical health. Even during COVID, it's important to keep those visits and keep track of that stuff. We got to take care of ourselves. I'm going to come here and kind of add a darker value like right here. And you can see this is just about sometimes finding those little spaces and making them work. Let's come in here and we can say, oh, well, there's a little bit of a fold in here. It's darker than this, though, so I got to go 
a little more of my ultramarine. And then a little bit of that is also a little bit of light comes right here. Not too much, so you just want to kind of do it in little spaces, little zones. Now we're doing just building up little bits at a time. Okay, we're starting to have folded fabric. It's just a process. Oh, Mary Youngblood says she needs to get her mammogram. Thanks for the reminder. You are very welcome. It's easy to forget those regular doctor's visits and well checks that we need to do during the craziness. And also, I have to tell you, I was very nervous to go to a medical center. I did it. <laughs> I mean, I used my elbows to open everything and the no touch door openers. And I was like shuffling. I was like a crazy person, but I got in and I got out. So that's what you do. Now, I may switch to a number four round just to work some of this out, some of these more kind of subtle things out. All right, so because we want to go here, there's this wonderful bit of fabric that his paw is going to sit on. And I'm going to definitely want to paint that out and its little curve as it comes around. And then maybe another little highlight edge. You come into the whites when you really want that highlight edge to really, really show. The toe of my brush getting a fine line. Everything okay, babe? Okay. Okay. Yeah, just everything's, I'm sorry, my mic down. So I put a link up here to the 12-inch uh, round okay. that we use. Excellent. Thank you, baby. No problem. Yeah, I haven't tried any of the other ones on there, and I don't have any idea if we like them or if they're good. So what I will say is it'll be interesting to see how long that link stays in stock. <laughs> yeah. That's the truth, right? Mm -hmm. All right, just getting some of that in there. It's just sort of fun to do. And I think I'm gonna come back and kind of work out. Again, I like taking the zinc into this because it's, there's some really beautiful um, values that we can get in these different things. When you're painting a uh, fabric folds, it is generally a value study always. That's why they have you do it in art school. Is they're asking you to study and observe value as you work. It feels like a, a really silly thing when they keep putting out like, I, I once had a teacher dump the contents of a trash can out on a table, light it, and call it a still life. I felt that was a little phoned in. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. But it was a good lesson. It was a, like. It was a very good lesson. There were many textures in the trash. I don't know if that was a lesson like, I'm as prepared as you are today, clearly, so what you get <laughs> is this. Right. <laughs> What was the lesson? I'm not super sure. So you can see me going through and kind of trying to capture the values. And I'm using my different blues, my ultramarine and my thalo blue to create these different values. And where I feel like I need to do stronger like highlights, I can do that with my titanium white. And then where you feel like you can, you know, capture maybe some other things. Some other thing? You can go back into your blue. I don't what know. What other things are you capturing? I don't know what other things I'm capturing. I'm capturing this corner here as it turns around. I feel like there's a, a bit of a highlight that pops up there. <laughs> I need to think about. But then, but interestingly demon. enough, the, the edge here is quite dark. It's this dark blue that comes around. So it's like finding that. You know, I actually really adore our community. I adore our community, I mean, like, too. I was just reading in here, and uh, was it Athena was like, I have two of these. I love them dearly. I'm not going to enter the contest because I want you also to have one. Oh, and so <laughs> that like, is the sweetest thing. Just, but, like, enter to win, man. Like, because I don't know. I can I, I can say from honest experience, I don't think the Sherpa has too many brushes, and there are brushes everywhere. But that is the sweetest. And that is the kind of thinking we need in today's world. 
We need to make space for all of us. <laughs> Think being thoughtful about other people never hurts. Raheel's like, but I need the brush right here. I need it. I'm with, I'm with, I'm with Raheel. Well, and no, it's two days. We're doing a giveaway today and a separate one um, that's also up on the blog for the cat tomorrow. So there's two days to win. Mm -hmm. And not the last time we will do that by any means. By any, any means. I feel like, here's the thing. I'm going to take some of my zinc over here. I feel like the background blue is so dark. And I know it needs to be dark, but I wanted it to feel more blue. So I'm going to add this into it so it feels like it's more part of this. And I don't want to spend all day on it because we have a lot to paint on this. But I do want to get, you know, these things in. And I can always come back and think about them again in a minute. So let's see how we're doing. We've got some folded fabric. Who doesn't like that? Mm. Sipping the coffee. <sighs> All right. Uh, Jane Garrett says she's so happy about the cats this weekend. I am so happy too, Jane. But we're the dog lovers. If you're here right now, right, we're going to, after the 13 days of Halloween, do a similar weekend with dogs. So definitely come by the Facebook group and give me all your dog suggestions. <laughs> Not your personal dogs, hmm. but like breeds and stuff, right? I'm going to go check so. this out. So some folks are saying they're having some trouble. Get to the page. I'm going to go right. double check that it works, and I'll share it. Sometimes there's, uh, you might have trouble if there's mobile versus desktop. But well, they should be able to enter on the Art Sherpa blog. That's why I'm going to share that link right now. Try this. Right. They should be able to go to the Art Sherpa blog and enter. In, uh, and you have the one from today's contest, right? Mm, presumably. Well, if it has the round kitty, it's today's. Round kitty. I think it has a round kitty. Then you're on the right one. There is a round cat. Round cat says, win my tongue. <laughs> oh, I should have done that. Why do I never pull you into these things when I'm planning them? You have the best ideas. I don't know about that. The best ideas. All right. So I'm getting kind of my little shapes going on my fabrics. Uh, I registered with Rafflecopter, but I don't see where I can enter. Um, go up to Barbara Ann where the Art Sherpa says HTTPS, the Art Sherpa dot com, Art Sherpa giveaway. And that's where you can enter. It's right just there. a it's just a pick one of four. So pick one of four. Now, I, it is possible, I guess, depending on where you live, that maybe there are uh, preventions for giveaways or something in your country. Like that, I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. Right. But this is, we do this one on Facebook a lot and it, the links do work. We will provide. Uh, Sylvia's like, she did it with the blog and it worked fine. Yep. And then Teresa Emma says, I thought the weekend you were talking about was a fall landscape theme. There what? is a fall landscape theme weekend after the 13 days of Halloween as well. Who is stun hands? That is the question. Who is stun hands? Do you like all the possibilities? Who, who Read them out. Read the questions out. Who I is stun know. hands? I asked. Rhetorically. <laughs> Get some black paint. Well, John reads the potential answers to who is stun hands. I don't know. Um, stun hands could be could be a kraken. Like, is stun hands a kraken? Is stun hands a kraken? Is is he a gnome? Does he really exist at all? We've never. I don't think that that was one of the questions. There, he could be a figment. If of you need the to know the answer, stun hands is John, my co-host. <laughs> Quick question: Do I need to Mister Spray my canvas before for better flow of paint? Nikki, it can help. It doesn't always work, and you don't want to over wet it because it can kind of go against you. But there are times, absolutely are times. I'm adding the dark shadows to the patterning of uh, the vase here. The R times. Right. But it can help. Absolutely, it can help. Just trying to create these little... So I find it helps to just do the shadows and then come back and hit some highlights, you know? Like hmm. you do. Like you do. Like we all do. All right, so we've got a nice little dark shadow there. But it's not the dark shadows that creates this vase. It will be the highlights that create the vase. Oh, goodness. I need some clean water. Do you? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to switch to this, but 
pretty soon I'll need to change it out. Both these two need to change out. Right, they've gotten quite them. dirty. This is about the level of cleaning that we need. And I need to think about my daffodils and my basic flowers. So for the most part, the daffodils are on top of the great part of the greenery. There's a little bit that is in front of them, and it's about finding that layering space between those two. Althea McNabb says stunt hands is the one that makes it work. Now, if you want to win the brush, you've got to be here when we announce the name, but it is a worldwide contest. We're willing to ship, like, where you are. Somebody should tell the computer that. He, oh, John would like you guys to tell the computer that he's the one that makes it work. I'm telling you last, like, we were doing a patron live last night, and my main camera blew out and would not work. And so we had to, like, come up with an on the, oh, what a stressful show. And my patrons are so sweet and understanding. So it was okay, but it was just like, ah. Drinking the coffee. So let's talk about the greenery. So for me, what I would want to do is I've got my browns here, and I really will start with that dark value of green that you get, you know, into the vase, right? So we're going to want to, we want a really dark value of green. And we're going to begin to put those up. Now, on this outer edge here, I'm going to come on the edge of my brush and maybe create some stem work. So these sort of stick out because we do want some stems that are pieced out from the big areas. That's a nice bit of stem that could be pieced out from the big area. And this will help you kind of define what is going on with your leaves. Now, I love to do this. This is, I love this brush for a leaf stroke because it just does it so well. All I've got to do is load it like this. And then I just pull press and I can create these structures, these wonderful structures of leaves that I can later come up and build on. You can see I'm leaving a little bit there. I'll come in with my highlights and everything, and I can always add the leaf that goes over the kitty's ear later. Yeah, yeah, enter it, says Diana Combs. I'm, it's a miracle since I'm so tech clueless. Uh, Suzanne and Cassidy Wilson wants to know, what patron level do you get extra classes? At the $5 level, you start to get extra classes. Um, you get more stuff as it goes up to 10 and 25 and 35. It just gets more and more and more and more. But it, you get a lot at five, like, like a lot. And then it just goes up. I will let, if you got, if you're in the patronage right now and, and don't worry about sparing my feelings, say, you know, say what you like about it, how you feel about it, whatever, like let people know you, they should do it, not do it. I won't take it personally. I'm, I'm with you. I'm on your side because feedback is always good. Um, but it's always better to hear from somebody that's in there, I think, than me, because somebody in there, they know what they're getting out of it. But you, if, even at the $5 level, you get into the Facebook group, and the Facebook group gets extra classes. Now, you get weird classes. <laughs> I will warn you there. It's strange stuff. Um, watercolors, pencils, just things that I don't generally always do on my YouTube channel because YouTube is a little bit unfriendly to experimentation, which is why you've got to come support some days it can the be five fair. minute classes that are starting Sunday right after um, our live show, I think is when we're going to start doing them. There. Do you guys like that little shape of dark green? Mm. Oh, Sherilyn says, I tried to share the blog, but it wouldn't let me. Oh, don't worry about sharing the blog. It's totally okay. Just let your friends know that I'm a place that they can come get free yeah. art education. And that is more, more, more than enough. Let's put out a little bit of our CAD yellow. And as we talked about before, cadmium pigments are made with real cadmium. I'm going to move the... If you have pets or children and you don't want to have cadmium pigments in your house... You can get cadmium hue or cadmium free. That's the color of the yellow, but none of the pigment. It's not as saturated. Um, but just so you know, because there's a lot of old information on the internet from like 2014, the uh, European Union investigated this. There's been several EPA studies. Artist cadmium is coated 
so it's less bioavailable. But if you ever read a tube of paint, like look at all the stuff on this tube of paint right here. This is a lot of extra information. There's See that symbol there, right man. there? It means don't aerosolize this. Don't put in a spray thing any, any, in any way. Golden is so serious about this. They don't make this pigment in an airbrush consistency. Your art companies do not want to kill you. Uh, so they're going to tell you as much as they can about their product. If there's ever anything you need to consider as a student about what you can or can't do with it, I'm sure once they realize how many, pe how many people are using torches on it, there's going to be an anti-flame symbol soon. No. I just think the paint companies don't know how prevalent that is. This yet. is a good question. Mm. So uh, Nikki was asking, she can't find put, you know, traditional tracing paper, but can find carbon paper. Check to see if it has wax on it. Just call the company's line. If it's carbon paper, no wax, it's fine. If it's carbon paper wax, it's not ideal. Now, if she can't call, is there a way just to quick test that? Like if she just not that I'm aware of. Do you have an idea for that? Well, the goal here is to see if it blends with your acrylic paint. Oh, yeah. So what you might want to do is just find an old surface, try a traceable on that old surface, and see how you're, see if you're able just to remove the, um, the carbon traceable, if, it's, if you can paint over it easily, if it erases with water easily. Chances are you're not going to have a problem with it, but... If it has any waxy residue that transfers with it, you might have an issue. So you'll just, you're really going to have to test that when you're in, um, you know, when you don't have access to traditional art materials, as they yeah. would say. But it doesn't mean it won't you work. You can also write a company online. Yeah. Now, it, it, testing is the ultimate thing here. Because if you test it, it works, you're probably going to be okay. But you can always contact a company because they're yes. not trying to mess with you. Oh, yeah, not, not I'm totally taking my cad yellow to my mix of phthalo green and the burnt umber and sienna, making kind of muted greens because a lot of these greens are in shadows. And I am just creating some highlights, you know, like you might see in a flower arrangement like this where the leaves are catching just a little bit of light. They're not bright per se. Remember to do thin leaves, thick leaves, all the shapes of leaves. I go back over leaves that I've already done and sometimes add different directional leaves as I'm in the main part of it. I'm going to come here because there's definitely some that come here. You can see I'm adding these thin little leaves. If you add more yellow, your green will brighten and you can come back and add pops of highlight where more highlight make like maybe on stems would be happening on your still life. See how we're working that? Oh, Brent F says, thank you for always being on the safety train, Sherpa. Art is safe. It's safe if you read the instructions, right? <laughs> it's like anything else. A lot of things are safe, but you still like in cooking, you still have some safety requirements. There's food safety. Everything has a little safety. It's not the worst thing in the world that we have to worry about safety. So I really appreciate Brennan's support on that because sometimes you get a little blowback when you're like, be safe. And people are like, no. <laughs> like, okay. I do not want to be safe. Safety third. You're like, don't tell me what to do. And I'm like, dude, I'm not. I'm not. I just want you to live. But you be free. <laughs> I, I like how in, in like the lab, being cool does not count. They're like, no, we don't care how cool you look. Your eyes are what we care about. Yeah, no, that's super true. But if you're ever wondering why I don't ever write another creator or like get in one of those online moments, okay. I don't feel like I write to tell another person what to do. Let's be honest. Mm -hmm. She doesn't click send. <laughs> don't tell her. <laughs> but I think it's interesting that everybody struggles with these very human things. Like, I don't click send. No, but like it, we really do care about your safety, guys, and she really does care. So that's what I can tell you is that uh, I just don't want to be the next potty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe, maybe I could be the next potty. Don't be. No, I don't want to be in that. I don't want to be in that. I feel like that is not the space I want to exist in. Oh, now, let's look at what we've got so far. So we've got our nice little folds of fabric. We've got our wood. We've got our background. It's looking pretty good. Let's sip our coffee. 
I don't think I could be shaved enough to be toddy. Like, All right. Would you use only black and white work with a paint? With, uh, would you use only black and white work with painting a portrait? Asked Lindsay. So you can do black and white portraits, and they're a great way to learn how to do them because you can do wonderful studies. You can also do a technique, and you're welcome to look this up called Grisai. Um, I have a Grisai apple, but I actually like another creator, Montmart, who's an art supply company, but they have a really cool explanation of Grisai that's, I think, beginner friendly and accurate. Um, it's a wonderful technique where you start black and white and then you glaze color. So there's a lot to do. You will never be sorry that you spent time doing black and white value studies on anything because it teaches you about value. It's always hmm. a good idea. Okay. So we got to get some flowers up here. Shall we, sir? Shall we? Shall we? Let's put out a little of our pad red. And I'll put this up here by my yellow because that's a good place to put it. And I think I'm going to get into my number four round. Oh, Mary Youngblood warns you guys, be careful on Amazon because they price gouge, which is actually sadly kind of true. So, the, so I'm going to put in a flower over here. I'm going to say, I'm going to do a really interesting thing. So I'm going to take a little bit of my red and mix it into my yellow and it's going to give me kind of like an orangey color and i'm going to come right here what you see is me improving the flow and we're going to paint just the trumpet of this flower i need some more orange into it i think come back This is our furthest back flower. And then there's another kind of one in shadow here. A little bit that we're going to put down here. And it's interesting because it's kind of got the double look. So we'll start with this. And then if I want to come forward, now, I can come in with a little bit of a rough that's a little bit like this, and it kind of creates that shaded effect for the tulip. That's, I just saw Annette was asked, just, just asking about um, buying art supplies on eBay. Yeah. Yeah, it's a mixed bag, right? What's your protection? But there are good deals out there. So, yeah, that's I would say buying on eBay generally speaking comes with about the about the same warranty for art supplies as buying at a garage sale so could be good could be bad could i've be seen good. people get amazing deals yeah. we always let people share those deals in our group when they get them because you know you never know how long a deal is going to be mm -hmm. and people buy lots and then they sell um so you never know if it's going to be a good thing i have added a little bit of my tight knit yellow if you love daffodils, tight knit yellow is a great color to have. Sometimes it's called Naples yellow light, but there are two Naples yellow, one that looks like a Band-Aid and one that's this beautiful light creamy green yellow. So you've got to kind of watch between those two to see uh, which one that you're getting. I'm going to add some of these little petals that are out here on these more distant flowers. There we go. So we're starting to put in some of our daffodil work. I've moved on, John, so let me get back there. Right Let's here. look overhead. One thing that you can do is you can always take a little bit of your ultramarine. Make sure if you need to kind of illustrate a shadow or something, you can do that. Okay, that has a little bit of shadow now. And then I take a clean brush and I kind of lighten it. So it's just about a, a almost a glaze. Now that's just glazed. You could use a glazing liquid if you're having trouble getting this. 
That's how I would get that. Just a little bit of a glaze. John is stunned hands. <laughs> Go host of the show if you're entering the contest. Remember, you've got to be here when we announce the winner. Right? At the mm-hmm. end, you got to be here so that our moderators can coordinate where we're going to be uh, sending nope. stuff to you. Security, privacy kind of thing. Yeah. So that was odd. Hold on just a second. We what lost was odd? It. Oh, my camera went out. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. And it's back. For some reason, there's little bits of dried paint here. Okay. So I'm going to continue to paint in some different sort of more focal uh, little daffodils. Again, my orange and yellow. This wonderful one, let's put one here that's maybe um, a little more open. And I'll go ahead and grab a little bit of this uh, ultramarine that's here. You know, kind of darkening the center of this. I'll let the edges stay kind of light. It's fun to do these sort of in-focus things. I'm also going to grab a little of my tight-knit yellow. And let's add some kind of peaking petals. Peaking petals. Yes, these petals are peaking. Sounds reasonable. Doesn't it? All right. So we're just sort of creating that loose floral sense of things right there. So you have push and pull. Mm -hmm. Coming right here on the edge. Really fill that and pull that back. Love doing daffodils. They fun. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm going to take this color right here, and it mixes into the kind of yellow and everything I have, and I'm going to make an upward kind of petal that definitely resembles that. You can always get a little of your other orange-yellow in there. I'm probably going to add some downward petal as well. And you can see I'm just... Doing that. So we're building up that structure. That's what you're doing. You're building up the leaf structure. Come back into your cad yellow. It's toned with a little bit of the cad red. And then you're going to come right here and build in the center. If you want to get some of your titanium white involved, you always can. Oh, I see. I see some faces from long ago that I chat faces that haven't been around but are jo- rejoining us. I see Lynn. She's like, "Hey, I haven't been around in a while." But hey, Lynn! Host. I'm like, "Hey!" Don't forget Lynn. to enter. Don't yeah. Don't forget to join. In. Don't forget to enter the contest. The mods will tell you all the rules that you need to know so you can enter. And again, this is because we've had a lot of sales and uh, giveaways and different things that were very um, kind of local only just because how everything was. And so we wanted mm-hmm. to make sure that we did some that were open um, globally. To everyone. To as best everyone. We could. Not a wonderful set of daffodils. Let's look at those. So here they are. Or I'll, I'll keep them here because John is <laughs> standing up. I can. Assume. And then when he goes like that, we'll go like that and take yeah. a look. So you can see that that's building up. One of the things that you may want to do is come back. Yellows tend to be a very transparent color. If you're painting student paints, you may need to paint your daffodils white before you begin painting them. If you're painting pro paints, you should be able to do it in a couple of coats and get a nice kind of effect on your daffodils. Mm -hmm. Those look really cute. And I like to just create those spaces that we have there. You can always come in with your yellow and put that out.
creating those little areas, those open areas, and the two values that you're working. Remember, if you ever need to push something back, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of my ultramarine and create a center in that daffodil, right? When that's all dry, you'll come back with some little ruffle leaf color and that'll help you capture those cups because there's like this tube cup and then a star flower. Basically, it's a tube flower and a star flower. Uh, Suki Su, oh, John, what's happening? I entered yesterday and now it's saying I have one entry already. Suki Su, there's two, there's two giveaways. There's today's giveaway and the giveaway we were supposed to do for Friday. I extended it to Sunday because that only seemed fair to everyone who had already entered. Um, and so you have two chances to win a cat's tongue, um, and you can enter one time each different contest. So if there's a blog, you just go first blog shows the round cat. Second blog shows the pop art cat. You can enter both of those. They are different. Two chances. Two chances. Which I do like very, 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 very much. Now we can do another kind of big, more focal daffodil here, but I'm going to let all this dry and I'm going to come here and start to work a daffodil up in say the corner. Now this daffodil is an interesting one because it goes on and off the canvas and it has an open center where what we really see is the ruffled edge. So I'm going to just paint this in orange initially. That way I can increase the shadow and add a yellow lip, All right? So that's the one that's sort of facing us. I'm gonna come here and get my tighten it yellow. If you're painting with sun layer, that will be your Naples yellow light. Let's go ahead and put in some very, very defined petals. Isn't that fun? Maybe that petal kind of is off the canvas a little bit so that we know that that flower continues. John, I'm, I'm going to rotate the flower a bit. It's okay to layer in front. Too many daffodil petals going on, but we're going to ignore that. <laughs> now I can always come in with my cad yellow into my tight knit as well. And another thing we can do, I can always add white. This was kind of a big project today, but it's good every once in a while to do some big projects. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? I think so. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Please reassure sitting. me that I've committed us all to this long thing and it's okay. That's literally what I'm doing. Thank you for knowing me so well. I'm coming back with this orange and well, we'll define that center in a second. If I wasn't doing this, I would be fixing the lawnmower so I can mow the yard. <laughs> so I think this is probably preferable. Is it? I don't know. You really like mowing the yard. Well, no. What I, what I would say is I, I like to have the yard mowed. That way I don't have the nagging thing in the back of my head going, you got to mow the yard. Oh. But I like the yard mowed. I you like seem so happy mowed. on the mower. Well, I mean, so on some level, Lawn mowing, especially a riding mower, is that back. backyard NASCAR. <laughs> I mean, and if you've got more than just like, you know, a suburban yard, it might be Indy slash rally, depending on what part of, part of the country you live in. So, you know, it can be fun, but... I think you have a lot of fun doing it. Well, it's fun until you realize that you, your equipment breaks all the time. Mm. I'm so, sorry for that part. I want upgrade. I'm going to have to Tim, Tim Taylor this thing. In a two man Taylor he teaches us what we need to know. I miss Wilson. That was his neighbor's name, right? Yeah, Wilson. That was Wilson. 
he was such an interesting like backyard philosopher like what a fun neighbor to have I think that that was like some sort of remnant of neighbors that we wished we had that we were all like, man, if I could have a neighbor, I'm going to come right here. I'm going to create just a sense of shadow in the center here. Like you do. Like any of us do, really. Mm -hmm. And let's get some of our yellow and I'll pull some of this yellow out. And I'll grab some of my white. And we'll make some of our little ruffled edge here. Which I think is super fun. I'm I can even go here, come back in a couple places. Like when this stuff all dries, you can like ruffle the edge, which is just enjoyable on every level. I'm going to move to the other one that I painted earlier, John. This one. I saw. And then I'm going to come back to the one as it's drying. Do, 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 do. See, I'm just on the toe of my brush, and I'm just wiggling that light value, and that's going to pop that cup. Coming back to the original petal that I painted, I went to the giveaway links, and it says you have entered, and you zero entered. I don't know what to say to that, May Kelly. I have two links to enter. There's two contests. And you're welcome to enter both. Yeah. Is my hope is what you're seeing. So guys, there's just an excess of places to enter. So here's what I what I'm gonna try to ask for everyone who's in the giveaways. We one, we are not this will not be our last giveaway. Yeah. So please forgive us as we work out our technical challenges. Yeah. And and the second thing I would ask is recognize that we can't always be responsible for the technical challenges of other, like our, our, the people between us and you. That's right. So I did give you guys the direct contact to Rafflecopter. So if you're having technical challenges that are answered within our particular giveaway, that you could directly contact them mm -hmm. and our email directly as well. Now, and then the, 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 but the most important thing is we want this to be fun. So if you're having a challenge, know that we will work with you to, we'll have to solve it so that if for I'm whatever getting reason, a lighter orange. Yeah, if for whatever reason this reason you could this time you couldn't enter, we want to make sure you can next time for whatever reason those may be. So I'm um, just I'm not buying trouble. I'm just saying that we're here to support you. So I appreciate that, babe. Yeah. A lot. So if you're getting some funky messages, you may want to check, make sure you're going in through our blog off our website. And if uh, you may have already entered, so if it's, I don't know what, you may have to check the Rafflecopter FAQ based on what kind of um, responses you may be getting. So generally, uh, there's two blogs. There's one with a pop art cat and one with a round, and they're two separate entries. So what what's most likely is that you've entered one and you haven't entered the other yet. Mm -hmm. Um and so it's just letting you know whether your entry has registered or not registered. So you may be looking at two different ones. Um, and, you know, you'll see there's two blogs and they're both under the giveaway subsection. Um, we did these on the website so that you guys wouldn't have to go to Facebook, which is where we normally do them. However, if you're on Facebook and you know where my giveaway tab is, it's there too as well. So <laughs> they're different places. I'm coming up to the little edge here and I'm adding these little petals, you know, of this daffodil that's kind of downward facing, trying to make sure that we've got these going. And let me, I got some kind of, it got a little weird here, so I'm going to continue to get that. And there we go. So just getting these big, beautiful plops of yellow in there. And I'm adding yellow. So we're just trying to get little bits of these flowers worked out everywhere. Now I may come in and get a little of my white into this mix.
that's behind hiding behind the cup for me. It is. There you go. Bing. Perfect. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, how are we doing? Pretty good. Excellent. So we've got some flowers in here. And they're doing their little flower thing, and I like that. But we also have some blue flowers, so let's think about those a bit. And those are interesting little ones because let's start with some blue and a little. This is the phthalo blue and a little bit of white in our number four round. We're going to mix a darker color and then a very pastel color. And we're going to come a couple places and I'm going to add little touches because these are little round flowers. Is this, what kind of flowers are these? I have no idea. Forget me nuts? I don't know. <laughs> you know, there used to be this stuff called baby's breath. Like you could put it in there. Now that seems like perhaps. In the COVID after time, we're not okay in with In the having, after times. We're not allowed with having, we don't want any breath on our flowers. No baby's breath. It's not social distancing now. <laughs> How many people has done this hug? Uh, Have you done this hug? To somebody who's at like your like service person came to your house. Thank you. <laughs> it's the closed arm pinchy hug of our new reality. Do you remember the before times when you actually touched people? Amazing. We had no idea how good we had it. It's we were so busy watching for Skynet, we didn't even see Outbreak coming. It's true. <laughs> but in all fairness, it wasn't a monkey. <laughs> it's so ingrained in us. The, you know, the sort of handshake, this greeting process. Um, yeah, it's wild, isn't it? It's very interesting. Let all that dry thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. And I feel like we have an opening here that needs a thing. So let's look at that for a second. We do have it in the reference and I feel like compositionally we need it. I'm gonna let everything dry for a second and I'm gonna paint some highlights while that stuff resolves itself. So I'm gonna take a little of my zinc over to my ultramarine blue, interestingly enough. And I'm gonna come here And paint some highlights on my vase with the ultramarine blue and a little bit of zinc white. And then I'm going to come in with a little bit of my white white. And add a very hot value. In other words, a very bright value to some of what's here. Kind of create this sense of it being very, very shiny. And then also we're going to capture the little circular. Hot reflections that were here. I think I'll go back into this. And then a little bit of the more ultramarine blue. And let's look at that for a second. That looks pretty good, but I'm going to do an extra thing. I'm going to take a little bit of this orange that I make with my cad yellow and my uh, cad red. Where are the red? Just adding a bit of more color to the space, I feel.
There we go. I like that. Yeah. John, do cinnamon do do cinnamon like to paint while sitting, or does she prefer at the easel? Um, oh, can I speak for you? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> they asked me. I don't know why they asked me. <laughs> <laughs> just. I'm gonna dry my painting, and you are gonna answer for Am me I? now. Okay. Yeah, you are. That's right. what you get. So what I'd say is, uh, it really depends on what you're doing, and if you want to work large, it working larger format is generally better at an easel because you can get a little further back from it you can get a little more distance and you can you can work farther away from it which is kind of the objective of long handled brushes and the easel in general it allows you to work standing move farther back from the from the surface it's not to say you can't do that at a table as well so you can work farther back from a table surface but in general Table surfaces are closer to you, they're easier to use, you're in a sitting position, so smaller is easier when you're in a sitting position. Yeah. Yeah, <sighs> she says. Like, and then M. Voss says Queensland, Australia has another outbreak of COVID restrictions and they are back on. Uh, all right. So Super if sorry. the blog is saying the contest is over right now, it is time for Colleen. Uh, to, to message me yeah. a name. Right. She's going to go through and pick an eligible winner. And really, eligibility is if you guess that Stun Hands is the co host of the show, name John. I feel like we got to have not some a Kraken, not another thing. Again, not trying to trick you. Try to make it a, a very like if you watch the show or you're here, it's going to take a minute to do it. It's going to take a minute to do it, guys. <laughs> I just feel like we're going to have some theme song music, too. I'm going to add some highlights to some of my um, do something in there that's like fabric here. And I'm using just my zinc white because it's wonderful and sort of transparent. In, and in that makes it a very nice a tool for when painting fabric. Because you can create wonderful glazes. And I like being able to do that. This is a long class, but it's a, a pretty it's one. A, it's a longer class. It is a longer class. Sometimes we do longer classes on Saturday. We do more involved things on Saturday. Sunday, which is, uh, Kelly was like, what's our class yesterday? I had a migraine yesterday, Kelly, and I just couldn't do the lights. So the class is now Sunday. So the short class is Sunday now. And it has a giveaway, too. I'm adding a little bit of my phthalo blue to you know, my white here, and I'm going to make sure that we've got some this nice nice little fabric blending. With fabric, it's always nice to work it a few times, I feel. Are you getting me more coffee? No. I can get you more coffee. Can you? So the other day we used our break. If you guys don't know this, I teach watercolor on Facebook. Uh, every Wednesday for sure, sometimes extra classes. And we used our regular YouTube break, the one that we licensed, the one that we paid for <laughs> um, on Facebook, and we were removed from 245 countries. It was quite extraordinary. Sometimes it's nice to just play with the values and those things so that you have nice, you have nice fabric. You guys want nice fabric. There we go. Getting some nice folds under Mr. Kitty Kins. And that says thank you to everyone for caring. Uh, Laura Patton so, says, I have a ruby satin number four that gonna... has an errant bristle. How do I get it back in line? So this is the basic deal. First, wash the brush thoroughly with soap and water so you know it's clean and free of just whatever the current deb debris is. Then you're gonna take uh, your tea kettle or whatever and you need very hot water. Not so hard that you burn your fingers and get a blister, but as hot as you can stand. And you're gonna dip the brush in that for like 20 seconds and then you're gonna pull it out. And again, don't touch it. 
if it's gonna burn you give your blister and then you're gonna finger shape and reshape that filament back into the brush and lay it flat to dry if it really fights back you can use like some hair gel in there to hold it all right we've got this going i think we have a last flower i don't think tom's head will hmm? i think tom will disappear if he comes on set yeah i think tom will disappear if he comes on set <laughs> All right, and you just let me know when we're ready to uh, announce oh, the winner. Go over here and look. Oh, I just got it today. I've got the name. You have the name. I'm gonna, um, while I'm waiting, I'm gonna go over and see if I see if I see this name chatting. Oh, I'm gonna that... go here and just see. Just everybody, see. chat. John's looking for you. <laughs> He's looking for you. Everybody, just I don't know, throw up donuts or something. If you're here. Let I'm John know. I'm just curious if, like, you if know, he can see you, if I can see they've been chatting and what they talk about. Oh, I'm just kind of going back as you know, scrolling up, seeing what folks have to say. It's very big brother of you. Well, no, it's like it's cool because you got <laughs> got a, got like a minute here because we're gonna be painting for a minute. Well, yeah, and not everybody chats, so some people are watching this like on their big screen TV. That's some true. people are watching it on their, their mobile device. So. It's not that I expect everyone has been been in here chatting, so I'm just curious. And man, there's a lot of chat scrolling back through here, so it's see hard. they're all telling you hi. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm here, I'm here, I see you guys, I'm here too. So what's basically going to happen is when we announce our winner, right, you're going to check in with moderator Cad Red, and she's going to verify that you're you. And then you're going to write us at support at theartsherpa.com with your address. Not in chat, please. That's not safe. And we can't have giveaways if we're unsafe, mm -hmm. which is not affiliated with Facebook in any way and doesn't require any purchase for entry. Thank you. S is like, I'm not chatting, but I'm here. I'm going to hair dry while you're looking at it. Let's go back down here. Got a second. So, man, it is so good to see all you guys out there. It is funny. Chat just went, we're all here. So thank you guys. I was like, I was also scrolled way up to see what was going on. And like, just to see, you know, because I was doing the back check. I wanted to see what you guys have to say to see like now. Uh, and I, and I also took me a second to just like, say her name a few times in my head to make sure okay. I was going to... Are you almost ready? I, I think I'm ready. All right. So you don't have to, like, I guess those of you that are painting with me can stay for the cat, but if you were here for the brush, you've done good. You're we'll good, accept yeah. your... You can come and go. It's okay. But We've held you long enough. I see everyone's there. Oh, I'm definitely here. Okay. So are we ready? I'm ready. Okay. So Madeline Shepard is the one who we have selected for Congratulations to Madeline Shepard. Madeline Shepard, please uh, identify yourself for Moderator <laughs> Cad Red to find you. We will, and you just let me know that you're here. And we will say, hey, we're sending you a brush. Because we got these extra brushes, and they're pretty cool, and you should have one. And we figured that when we were alive, we could give stuff away because we had all this stuff, so it would be kind of fun. So we're doing it. Nah, we're going to give Madeline Shepard a minute to find us. We are. We're going to give her a minute. And then we'll do a countdown. Well, because, well, you know. Well, sometimes their friends will find them. Their then friends are true. like, girl, get online. You better get You've done a thing. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I'm kind of like looking for Madeline. I'm looking. I'm getting my out. You keep doing your. Okay, I'll keep teaching. So I'm getting a brighter yellow. This is a brighter yellow than the one, the orange behind it. Let me know if you see her, because I want to go yay. Well, I will. No. Now I'm going to sit there, and I'm going to put out a little more of my um, tight knit yellow for the petals. This is our last big yellow flower, and then we're going to finish our blue flowers. And then we get to paint our cat, which is the whole reason I wanted to do this painting today. And I'm going to introduce you to the fun of some brushes that do some amazing fur. Mm. I'm going to load up with my tight knit yellow. And I'm going to come here and. Now, if you didn't, if you weren't Madeline Shepard and you were like, man, I really wanted to win this brush, there's another chance. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Minana. 
Ho Tien. <laughs> for those who... John travels, so he's actually got useful words for many countries. A couple. And uh, so, if you're... If you're going to be around in the in the in the after time day after, I guess we'll say another way that we have more brushes to give away. Yeah, we're not here to stress people out. We're just here. We know this time right now. I guess what the thinking is on this. Um, we've been asked for this for a long time, and we know this time right now is really hard on everybody. Mm -hmm. So we thought this is something fun that we can do uh, to sort of I don't know break up the stress of the week. Now, give you a reason to be excited that isn't terrifying. If, if, you know, we're with Madeline a little yellow. bit of time. But if Madeline it, it is, isn't here to claim the prize, then we, we may have to select another name. Which, you know, I don't, I'm just saying, so stick around. We want to make sure that we can all, you know, give Miss Shepard a, a proper Congratulations. All right. Okay, so let's do a two-minute countdown for Madeline, and then we're going to pick another prize. I'll put, a, I'll put a little countdown timer on here, and I'll let you guys know. Now, um, now if, there's a, if this is one of those photo finishes where, like, we select someone new and, and Madeline I don't know. The in, rules are the rules. it got to be well, fair for so, everybody. So here's the thing is that I have, I have, I have some margin nope. of error, so I'm going to watch. <laughs> Okay, but I will let you know it. what to do in relationship to that because yeah, I've been thinking about that too. But we're not gonna. We're, we're like if if we if we decide to. We're call not someone mean. Else, we're not gonna be mean. We're gonna like make sure everybody gets okay. But Madeline, you gotta be here to claim your prize. You gotta be here to claim you your be, prize. Claim your prize. So I'm gonna give you every every bit of of like. Uh, Latitude. Laura Patton says, hey, the boiling water trick worked. Thanks. You're so welcome, Laura. I'd love to see that work in real time. Let's, let's all, all right. How much more time does she have? Are we there? No, we got, we got a little bit more time. So we should all put on our, our summoning hats and be like, Madeline Shepard, come claim your prize. Come, Madeline Shepard. That's my Wayne's World magic. I'm. If you guys wonder why I use Rafflecopter, is it has uh, the best randomizing software that's out there. It's very FBC compliant. It's very fair in many, many, many regions and countries and things. And I really looked at that. I used to use this random comment, comment picker, but I felt like it had a lot of flaws to it. So that's why I changed. Okay. Let's see here. So, but, you know, the... Uh, what was it going back up here? What did it say? Someone just asked a question. Uh, Bachelor out tomorrow. We closed the link for today, but there's another giveaway tomorrow during tomorrow's live show. So you can enter for that one. That one is open. Um, and that one's actually open right now. Did mm. we see Madeline? I am not seeing Madeline yet. So we're gonna I'm gonna we're gonna go do our little I think we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see give her just Oh a my gosh, I love a film a Althea McNabb. Give her a minute just in case she's on the toilet. That's okay. We're I'm with you I'm with you, Athena. So we've I'm got gonna, time. I'm still painting got, the cat. We've got lots of time. So we're gonna be chill for a second and just We can chill. Because we I have, wanna make we sure. We have the we have the ability to be chill, we do. I got I got I don't like, like what a, I did there. Well, I guess it wasn't bad. Sometimes I do a thing and I'm like, oh, I don't know what I think about that. And then I'm like, ah, oh, it wasn't bad. Mm. Keeping my eyes peeled. Okay. So I think, um, is Madeline there? Can I see Madeline? No. No, not yet. But we're going we're gonna to send love and wishes to Madeline. All right, guys. All right. We did this yellow daffodil. Let's scroll back over here. All right. I love how everyone is cheering for Madeline. That is really good. Okay, so I'm gonna draw again. We got another. We got another drawing. Okay, um, Alyssa Otter wants you to know, John. Uh, FYI, if you draw again, Trey Cullen is watching. She just can't chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like you can get messages to me however you need to. So, okay, 
Now, you can message through a friend. It's like, it's okay. We've got another name drawn. So, Annette Locke. Annette Locke, if you have been selected to get to brush too. So, Annette, you must be here to claim your prize. Are and you here with Madeline, us? Madeline, if you find out about this later, write support Just, at thearchsherpa.com. We here, have a... You gotta be here. Come, we come. have a bummer prize if you're for still if here, you miss the brush. If you're still here, tell me. You gotta... And let me know. Because if you come in... But Annette, if you're here, Annette Locke, let me know. And... Madeline Shepard, let me know if you come back in a little late. Just let me know. I want to know you're here. You gotta be, but you got to be here to claim the prize. That's the, like, magic trick, right? So one of the concerns is that she, she entered on Facebook but doesn't know how to log on on YouTube and post a comment. Uh, one oh, of the good things is, is it lets people know what those guidelines are on the rules through the website mm-hmm. on the giveaway. Yeah, and we don't do – we don't generally do – oh, hey, look, there she is. I see Annette. Yay! Hi, Annette. Annette Locke! Congratulations, Annette Locke. Thank Congratulations. You. And Madeline, if you're watching later, I Just, used a contest and I know that. And we talked about a way that we could kind of do like a but you I didn't know. hear my name kind of situation. So write support at theartsherpa.com and we'll let you know what that circumstance is. And Nick, congratulations on winning. Not the one I painted with today, but your brand new, untouched, fresh from the package. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Okay. Brush. So congratulations. Something you may not know. Hmm. Cat's tongues are born in litters. They come in a litter of six. And that's just that they always come in a litter of six. And that's just how they come. And Netlock says, I never win anything. Thank you. Well, you have won today. You've won today. Let's add those blue highlights. So what is this? This is just titanium white in my halo blue. And I'm making a light highlight. To go on some of the little these little blue flowers that are in the bouquet. So Annette, what you're gonna need to do is write support at the artsherpa.com. I'm sure our mods will put in the exact email address. Mm-hmm. Uh saying that you're the cat's tongue winner and with your address, and we will because we have a new shipping center, guys, because we've had so much stuff go on with that. And we will get your brush I do believe out to you. I do. I'll, I'll go back in there and make sure, but I'm pretty sure we've got Annette's email captured through the through the um, thing. So we email Yeah, her. we do have our thing captured, but she yeah. can... I just don't want her to put her address in the chat so oh, she no, can no, write no, support no, no, at no, the no, no. we'll, com and Yeah, we'll contact you too. We'll make sure we get email. We're going to make sure we meet up, but the best thing is write support at com. Yeah. And let us know you're you. And we have your email, so we'll be able to verify it. <laughs> Yes. Are you worried about like the internet trollsings? Yeah, you know we. I do get internet trolled very, a lot. We're very proactive to make sure that we take care of you guys. So we want to we want to make sure that. Uh, where are you at? What are you doing? Oh, so Rahil Shaw's like finally I can pay attention to the painting. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of there's just been a lot of little blue dots. There's been a lot of little blue dots, my friend. Now. Because and I'm adding have, some blue, blue dots just sort of out here like these caught a okay. little more sunlight now, in all or fairness, whatnot. Let me ask, do you have blue flower dot technique that you might you want to share before we move on because we have been chit-chatting okay. about? Okay, so really all this is, is I'm coming in with the phthalo blue and my titanium white and I'm adding little dot highlights to the dark blue dots that I put in. Um, and this is just to show like little petals of the flowers. It's a nice loose way of pa- painting what we've got here. And you know, yeah, they might be a little brighter than say other stuff, but we don't mind. Okay. I'm going to add a little blue here because it feels like that would be blue right here. Now, another thing that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to take my ultramarine blue and I'm going to kind of come along my wood here and sort of create a shadow. Just a little bit of one that the scarf might be casting on the wood. I think one of the things that's really important to remember is that our objects cast a shadow. I'm also going to take my ultramarine blue and come under where I know I'm going to be putting my kitty and add a glaze of that as well. To shade under the kitty cat. 
Did I get fresh coffee? I think do, I need fresh coffee. Do, do, <laughs> uh, Casey uh, Mockbell says, can we do another tutorial with daffodils? They're my favorites. Yes. Oh, Lynn says, oh, no, Lynn, thank you very much for sending me. Sometimes, guys, on Messenger on Facebook, I don't see your messages. Sometimes Facebook filters them because it perceives your account is, I don't know, not friended to mine or whatever, or uh, not connected through friends. I don't really know what its decision-making process actually is because sometimes when I look at it, it seems very random. But I don't always see your messages. Um, and then also sometimes there are just so many, I don't see them all. And so I try to just look at my messenger real fast and see if there's an art question, catch as many art questions as I can, but really the best place to reach me, me reach me where I, you know, you've contacted me is support at the because I, I check that for work every day, you know, so we are, we're all checking that. Is ultramarine less transparent than Thalo? Actually, I feel like ultramarine is more transparent than Thalo. Um, but I haven't really done a comparative study. I do like to use it as like a shadow color. So that's just a thing that I do. So like right there and get a little shadow under the kitty belly and then you can work the thing. We've got lots of fur and everything over that. So it's just a nice way to kind of create those little spaces. This thing's in shadow. All right. Now, the kitty. I'm going to put out some fresh paint because I've been out here a minute. Um, it's the same colors. I'm not going to put out different colors, but sometimes it helps me. And we have a lot of drying uh, activity that happens here. And um, so that's what that is. Uh, well, John's gaming that. John tells Cinnamon she, is, she has never tried the medication uh, Topamax for migraines. It works because I have them as well. I haven't really ever tried any medication. And I think like a lot of times I didn't even think that that's what was going on. But I realized that because I have nausea, because I have light sensitivity, because sometimes it's, it is debilitating to function, that it actually qualifies as that. I think for a lot of years I, I called them headaches. And I'm just uh, trying to like sometimes talk uh, to my doctor about these things more and more. And sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's hard to remember that, hey, these are things we should talk about. Did you do the whole bucket? I, I just, I set the cup down and picked one with my foot as I dumped the other one into the bucket. Can you tell by a crash solid bucket? John passed. So we were doing a crash solids bucket and John just spilled it in the middle of the film no, just studio. One cup. Just one cup. Oh, goodness. So let's take a deep breath. We're about to begin our kitty cat. Um, this is my favorite part personally for me of the painting. Um, even looking at my sketch, I think I positioned his face forwarding facing a little more forward to me um just in that free hand what i'm really going to love about this is using some uh special tools this is a grass comb i'm definitely going to use this um i also have this really fun little tool which is the i don't know what they call this this is the this is a half inch flat let me tell you something right now this is not a flat this is definitely also a type of comb this is a specialty comb brush. So when it says flat, no other flat is like this. And it's the half inch flat, which that does seem to be like a half inch. So these are going to be really fun tools. You can also use small fans um, or dry brushing. Um, but these are fun tools to be using in relationship to see grass combs come in this. And basically what it is, is that these are snipped into the filaments so that they make very specific little kind of herring marks that i really really like for the kitty kitty for this beautiful kind of gray kitty i'm definitely going to be using ultramarine blue as um, a base of the fur color all right because we have this wonderful fur color so let's get some ultramarine blue out there and um i'm going to be using um i think a good color would be a uh, burnt umber because these two will make a nice gray. I'm gonna put out black, white, and um, some zinc. Now, on the eyes, we will be doing a gray, but that's something we're gonna be doing at the end, so don't feel like you've gotta rush into that in any way. Um, in any way. And remember, if you're in the Facebook group, all those references are there for you in the pinned post. 
And you can always check the comments for traceables if you're ever having tr getting trouble getting traceables from one other source. I try to put them in there as well. This is my um, pure titanium white. So here's the two paints. Doesn't really matter what brand. Uh, this is Artist Loft Level 3, not Level 1. Level 3, and they make a Level 3 paint. If you weren't aware of it, it is pretty darn good. Um, it, I find if, if this one's out of a color, I can get it here. And if this one's out of a color, I can get it here. It's pretty interchangeable, but sometimes this is cheaper. Um, the zinc white is transparent. The titanium white is opaque. And one of the nice things that both of these tubes of paint do mysteriously is have these black marks and it shows you how opaque the paint is. I love tubes that show you what's happening with the paint. Um, because then you are not having to worry about what it actually will look like out of the tube. Not every company does that. Um, like here, the Senelier does not do that, but Holbein does. It's really company by company. Yay, fresh coffee. Uh, Annette, have you ever thought of having a bucket for dirty and a bucket for clean water close by? That's actually what was happening when John spilled everything. <laughs> we did. Is it a rake brush? Uh, it, it, it is a rake brush or a comb. Uh, is generally how you'll find them labeled. Again, there's no universal labeling in brushes. A very frustrating reality I discovered when I began teaching broadly online. Um, and it's a weird thing when you get out of your smaller kind of classrooms or lectures or um, demos and, and you get onto the internet, as a teacher, you get a lot of feedback globally, right? And so one of the things that I very quickly figured out was that the information I had wasn't universal. And so that's actually why I first started going to industry events was to try to talk to breast companies to go, what's the deal? What is the universal standard? And they were like, oh, there is none. So sometimes you'll find brushes like this and they will um this is definitely you know this is called the grass comb and i think it is sometimes i see these called as a comb they can also be called as a rake i think more traditionally people call this again this is called a fan but it's not a fan they'll call this one a rake and the reason they'll call this one a rake more often is because it looks kind of like a rake because the way it's flared out weird thing you might not know but now you do because I had to learn it, and now you do too. All right. This is my cat's tongue. Filbert means cat's tongue in French. I have a filbert that has a point. So it's a pointed filbert, but it's made for acrylic painting. And so I wanted to give it a delineated name, and I didn't really love pointed filbert, so I just called it directly cat's tongue. And I did that because in decorative toll painting, and in watercolor painting, there's a very exaggerated version of this brush that they called the cat's tongue. So that's where that all came from. Uh, Royal and Langnickel sell grash brushes too. And the nice thing about Royal and Langnickel is they have that soft rubber grip on it. So if you have uh, arthritis or grip issues, that can help. If, you, if you're not familiar with that company, Royal and Langnickel, they do do some grip um support there and uh pain support so sometimes people prefer them greatly all right now what manufacturer is the red brush uh right now silver brush limited makes my art sherpa brushes if you go to their website www.theartsherpa.com and you pull down their products, you'll see Art Sharp as a tab. You'll see I have brush sets where I hand curated brushes that I like that they make. And I have the open stock where you see all the different open stock that I have of this brush with the registered Sherpa white filament. Um, and then also you can find a web finder to find where you could buy these products if you wanted to purchase them. So the colors that we have out for the kitty are titanium, oh no, zinc white, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, titanium white mars black and that's how we're going to be getting there when we're in the face i think i'm going to definitely do my small number four round and then i'll do a bigger color a uh, bigger brush for the um body now i'm mixing the ultramarine blue with the burnt umber and that gives you a very nice gray which you can see there and it's very much that cat gray sometimes mars gray doesn't quite give you that cat gray. You're like, cat gray, yeah, that cat gray. You know that cat gray. 
Oh, moderator Cad Yellow says, is this a new mug? Mm. Is it a new it's mug? It's a strangely tasty mug. It's all, this mug it's is being, so tasty. That, it, that mug is the color, very near the color of the green screen. Oh, and so it disappears. <laughs> it looks like, it's like, I wonder if my Florida mug is the same way. Let me see. Because it's all got the green in it. <gasps> yeah, look, it is. It's oh, because it's Florida gators, mug. all the gators are. Uh, all the gators are gone. See, Florida, you're green screened. Florida. All right. I'm going to take a very light gray. And let's come in here and start to paint a basic structural value of the cat. So like come here and we know he's got a nice little light gray spot here. And a nice little light gray spot here. You know what that you know what those gray spots are? Mm. Sarcasm. Yeah, you have sarcasm, I'll tell you that. That cat just you can see it. That's a sarcastic cat. <laughs> you're so bad. Oh, you're so bad coming here to his little nose. I love cat noses. I really, really do. And I'll go ahead and kind of come up his nose with sort of a oh. light color. And I'm sorry for the turning, just sometimes it helps me when I'm working in the sitting position to see things better if I turn them. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna just keep going. Now, as I move out, I can get into my darker grays. I'm gonna add some water into that, so that darker gray. And these are, in a sense, kind of extreme transitions. And the reason that we're doing extreme transitions is that um, this is, the, in a sense, the underpainting. Mm. Coming around here. Just want to get that basic little shape going. Now we've got a leaf that's going to go over one ear, and I'm deciding if I want to do that or not. You've got a second to think about these things. You really do. When you have the very light area, it's nice to go over the eyes and kind of get that in now. I find sometimes it's hard to paint over chalk. Mm. I'm going to just keep kind of catching his value, painting him in, and he's going to have a rough minute, man. Thelma. Thelma's like, what's the answer to tomorrow's question? Like, you got to come tomorrow's question. Video and see. I can't tell you tomorrow's answer. If you've today. been watching this show for a while, you'll know the answer. Uh, if you're very, very new, we'll tell you. You can't. That's got to be there. Well, you got to be there to win anyway. So, I mean, like you could guess, but don't guess because it's an easy answer. If you just show up tomorrow, we'll tell you. And, and put that first line anyway. of the ear in too early. I'm going to go with that because I, if you remember, I kind of sketched that out. The ear has to start up at the corner of this eye. It kind of ends where that jowl ends. So that's just a that's just a cat physics physio physiology that we've got to kind of deal with. Continuing to paint him in gray and block him in. And even not all of his fur, right? So that's like another thing to realize. Like, so sometimes, um, 
you will uh, see something like like his upward paw. Mm -hmm. The lounging paw. Yeah, the one that's about to do a thing. He hasn't decided if he wants to do a thing yet. It's like, I see that feather you're whiffling at me just off the screen that I might paw at. I, I wish that it had showed his toe beans, to be really honest. I love toe beans on cats. We toe beans! Toes getting ready to come toe out. Toe beans! But there were no toe beans. Sometimes you just gotta... Now, will there be a traceable for this cat? There was a traceable for this cat, but I'll probably make a second traceable just from what I painted today. <laughs> Because sometimes the traceable, the first traceable that I make, um, just by the act of me painting and everything gets to be a little okay. different than everything else. So, for what's a toe bean? A toe bean is on kitty paws. They had these little, these little pads that look like little bean. I'm okay. I don't have to talk like that. I like little beans. I like them. They're toe beans. And kiss your kitty toe beans. But don't because they get in the kitty litter. They're but like, you want to kiss their toe beans. But they're like... There are some people who are like, what's a toe bean? Jaren O'Brien says toe beans are the best. <laughs> toe beans. Anyways, here in the U.S., I don't know what we call them globally, but here in the U.S., uh, toe beans are often used. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to use my cat's tongue to paint my cat. Total inception irony there, I know. And we're going to come along here. He's much darker. Back here, I'm on the toe of the brush, and you're going to notice that I'm flicking the brush to create kind of this sense of fur. It's very important that your brush strokes go in the direction of the fur. That's one of the first tips that I'll give you about painting fur is keep your brush strokes in the direction of the fur, right? As I'm doing this, I want you guys to know that Sunday on top of the makeup class, because I was not feeling well Friday, and so I'm making up um, a class, we are releasing the first in a new series of five-minute art videos. Mm. So in five minutes, I teach you a thing, like for real, like a thing. It's a project you can do, and the idea of it is you watch the first one, which teaches you the techniques and the basics that you need to know, real crash course, and then each day there's a subsequent project that you get to see in five minutes, so if you don't have a lot of time, it doesn't take up your whole day like this, and then you can practice those techniques and paint them and learn them. Hmm. The series will need your love to survive. Because, <laughs> you know, it's very experimental for us. There will be traceables if you need them for any of the projects or any of the stuff that's going on. And we're just going to go through uh, this one that's coming up that's starting. Um, and I kind of hinted about it during our hour-long All About Fan Brushes course. It's the fan brush one. Mm. So just like everything you need to know about stuff you can paint with the fan brush and how you do it really covered fast. It's kid-friendly. It's homeschool-friendly. All you homeschool moms, which by the way, homeschool moms, you were doing this before COVID made it a necessity. You are amazing. I just personally want to give my hand to you, to all the homeschool moms, because this stuff is hard. Mm -hmm. And to all the teachers who are making this work so kids can be in school while this is going on and their lives don't have to be disrupted. A lot of heroes out there right now making stuff happen. And I'm very grateful to everyone. Just painting gray, but in the direction of the fur. That's going to be the big one. In the direction of the fur, guys. In the direction of the fur. And you come here and see I'm flicking to the side and it makes that little fur stroke. Mm -hmm. That is very helpful in your painting. This brush does everything. I mean, the fact that it was really cool because it was a cat's weekend and we we're giving away a cat's tongue. We've been giving away art on Facebook. If you've ever wanted my, one of my original paintings, give away two. We've got one coming up pretty soon. You do? Mm-hmm. We'll be giving away. So that's a good place to get that.
find originals. I'm going to be adding a little bit of white to this, just not too much, but just that this paw is a little bit lighter. One, so we don't lose it when we're painting the cat, mm. right? Because otherwise we could just lose the paw. So one great way to do that is to make this a bit of a lighter color. Just so we know where it was, like, it's like a placeholder. If that makes sense. I'm going to come here and kind of do a downward flick with a slightly lighter color. Can you guys see how this is? I'm going to let John zoom in so you guys can see this action happening. Now, I've done a lot of quests and videos on fur. But I would say that this is definitely, definitely going to be one that will really answer a lot of questions. And look, I'm just going forward. So if you have my cat's tongue, you don't have a comb or any of that, you're okay. Because you can do this, can't you? There we go. Look at that. We just did bellies. Where can I enter the drawing? Please excuse my internet is uh, being crazy. Um, so Betty, tomorrow's drawing is open. Uh, Edith's for the pop art cat. It's on Sunday. This one got closed, but tomorrow's is open. Hmm. Uh, Sidia says you must have thousands of original paintings. What do you do with them? Is there an exhibit on gallery? I asked on the Facebook group too. A few of us wanted to know. I do have thousands and thousands and thousands of paintings. I actually told John there's a video I want to make where I show you guys everything I've painted. And, and it would still be missing probably 20 to 30 about giveaways or ones that we've sold or things like that where we don't eat, like, where it would still be, like, that less, but it would be thousands. Yeah. Thousands. It would take a whole team to help me make that video. <sighs> but the new website, actually, we're looking at it, should have a pretty good, actually, there's a lot of things that are going to have a pretty good archive library here pretty quick. Probably, yeah. but I would say by the end of the year, we mm -hmm. will have more data architecture in place than we have ever before. Now, Casey asked it, that her cat's tongue was looking more like a filbert. Two things that cause your cat's tongue from this line to look more like a filbert. One, the act of painting with it does over time wear down the filament. So if you paint a lot like I do, you can reshape your cat's tongue just through natural use. Um... However, if you haven't had it very long, yes, you can reshape it with water and um, the water trick works on it. Sometimes with the cat's tongue, because it's such a firm filament, you need a warmer water to do it. And I found that I need spike gel to make it hold, but I can get it back. The trick is to just get all of the paint out of this filament right here. And if there's a lot, you're going to need to soak in rubbing alcohol to here, no deeper. And then um, keep washing it out of the brush until the rubbing, until the paint gets out of the ferrule that it shapes nicely. I have no feelings on that. I just, mm. no opinions at all on the end here. I am. All right, so I'm gonna add some more white here. Let me back up into the face. Probably more white than I'm actually needing. And I'm gonna go into a darker gray, which again, interestingly enough, is my ultramarine and my burnt umber. And let's start just painting in some of Mr. Kittykin's face. And yes, you may call him uh, Kittykins. So how do you, um, how do you make, sh so how do you keep the, the, the face looking the direction that you want it? <sighs> really seriously, it'll be about lining up the eyes and the angle of the eyes. Hmm, what do you mean? So... Whoops, I kind of got that off, but. Those lines, I might move this a little bit, center line down his face. Those lines are what needs to line up. Right? So when you look at the round of his face, you guys can see that. I messed up my reference really badly. <laughs> but so you see it has this shape round. If you think of that as a ball. If you want the eyes to be looking this way, right? 
they have to be in perspective positioning to this center line here, don't they? So even though that this line is in three quarters and is barely showing, it's still on that same center line as this one. See how they add the pupils are there? Yeah. Right now, that's because he's looking up here. And I think it's important, you know, and, and you can see what I mean about the ear and this lining up. And then, of course, there's this one to the nostril. These are important things. Hopefully, I can still paint him. Because <laughs> I just took out a bunch of my detail work. I don't know what my thinking was there. <laughs> Sometimes I get my teacher brain on before I get my, uh-oh, I need that reference brain. But I'll do what I can. So a lot of times it's just about trying to keep those spaces working. Right, like knowing that his eyes got to have a bit of a down to that corner of that nose, right? Yeah. Things that you understand about the structure of his face and what they have to be. I can always make his eyes uh, bigger where I need to, and, and I may. Definitely, definitely may. And come in here and add a darker value for sure. I'm gonna do a couple weird things. I'm gonna put out some phthalo blue because okay. I've gotta fix a thing here. I'm going to put out some quinacridone and I'm going to put out some green. The green is really for his eyes. And I may stick out some yellow in a minute for that too. <laughs> what? And it's like, it is super early in the morning. I got to go to sleep. I see you guys. Annette! <laughs> Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Uh, Nikki's like, I wish we could zoom in on the eyes. You will be you able can. to zoom in in the eyes when I'm painting them. So we, we will get in there and zoom in on them. Mm -hmm. Promise, promise, promise. Right now, Cinnamon's working on the other side of the surface. So that's the hardest side to zoom in on. Yeah. And also sometimes I have to move my um, my stuff to be able to sort of like adjust to. Yeah, but we'll be able to get in there and get real good view yeah. of. Come in here on the ear. And we're going to want to have that nice sort of like really nice little outer light. Okay. Dark on the inside. Definitely needs to be dark on the inside. I'm going to take some of this white over to my blue. Just because this part of the fabric was in a bit of light. Mm. But I don't want it to look like it's part of the cat. This is what I'm fixing here. I'm just making sure that our fabric isn't looking like it's part of the cat. Yep. And I'll fix that in a minute. Now, I don't want his ears to be all the way attached to his face, okay? And it kind of temporarily looks like that right here. They're actually here. I'm only moving this not because it needs to be moved, but because I understand that for you at home, you might accidentally do that and not see that. I'm just making sure you guys see that that's a different thing. We're going to take a little more of the ultramarine. Right? Ultramarine here. We're going to paint in. Getting that nice dark value. And I also want to make sure that I do have somewhat of a nice dark value for this ear here. Let's turn to the side. Even though we know we're going to have a leaf over it, it's just nice to make sure that there's the same values exist for both of those spaces. 
All right, there we go. I'm going to take a little bit of the umber, the burnt umber, and the quinacridone. And paint in a bit of a nose. Just a little bit of one. It's got a little bit of a kitty nose. And we'll put in highlights and stuff in a little bit. We just want to make sure that we've got that. Then, you know, also right here, it's quite dark. And I'll have to uh, make sure that I'm keeping his face. Sometimes the angle that I'm at when I'm sitting doesn't really let me see the angle that I need to see. Sure. That's why I got to move it around. And that's why I have this, because uh, I'm not a easel. That's why I have, and I'm not, uh, my artwork isn't angled towards me. That's why I have the, the round table, the spinning table. What I'm going to try to do here is I know that the nose has got to come down like that. And so, again, I'm just working that rail. It got a little bit off. So in the cat, and I might even grab some black hair. It's important that this place right here on him has some pretty good shadow. And again, I painted out what I needed huh. <laughs> to do <fill> him. <laughs> oh, what was I thinking? When you destroy your own reference. <laughs> you have dereferenced your reference? I've dereferenced my reference. I don't want this line to go too far. And so that's what you see me playing with is I'm trying to make sure that the line is exactly where it needs to be. And that his face is symmetrically built. Mm -hmm. Right, because otherwise it won't feel like the cute little kitty that he is, will it? Probably not. I I don't necessarily. If I'm missing questions, now Court says she thinks every cat's a yoga teacher. I think I think. Well, I think somebody was observing cats when they invented yoga. I'll tell you that. <laughs> they were probably yeah. like, "That looks like a really good activity." I think people are cat pets, and. Dogs are people pets. People are cat pets and dogs are people pets. That's an interesting outlook. I'm going to take this just because I want you to see this. This is really fun. We're going to come in here and get a little bit of the uh, a very light color. Quite nice, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Unexpected little fur, fur tool if you've never ever used it. And a great way to start talking about some of that more fun stuff that you can do with your cat paintings or any painting. This is again your grass comb. Come get a highlight. Right on the far side of Kitty Kin's face. Yeah. Right. Take a little bit of your ultramarine and your burnt umber. I'm going to get some water in this flow. This, this isn't dry brushing. You actually have to have pretty good flow on this brush for it to work well. Mm. I'm 
There we go. So we're starting to layer in. Fur has a lot of shading in it. There's a lot of shadow in a fur. And so it's important when you're painting it to leave room for it to, you know, have some dark patterning. Those are fun things to play with. I'm going to come in with a little bit of my white paint and make sure that I highlight this fur on the far side of his face before I ever get into any of those other parts. I'm dipping in water, improving the flow. Just improve the flow over here and make sure we've got a nice kitty shaped face. Mm -hmm. Important. Nice kitty shapes. Now, under his chin, right, it's much darker, so we can start putting some of this darker fur layman in, in this space. Mm hmm. And you can see that it kind of comes around at an angle. You can keep playing with the blue and the ultramarine. Thank you for doing the mm hmm Because sometimes I feel like I'm alone if I can't look at the chat. <laughs> Is long fur or short fur more difficult? Um, neither, but they do have different techniques sometimes in how you would paint them. So... Because, like, in longer fur, you'll see, like, segments of fur that kind of open and show uh, shadow underneath. Um, sometimes in short fur, what you see is a lot of smooth reflections from the light. Mm -hmm. So it's just about, you know, making sure that you've got... The right technique for the right kind of fur. Uh oh, you got you got to fur and away from me. I did. I got I got I, I got here, really I deeply look, into my fur, I, and I was just like I furred away. I went away to look over here, to read and read the read the chat, and all of a sudden I turned back, and you were like, "You furred away from me." I furred so far. <laughs> I furred so you furred far. You furred far away from home. I furred so far away from home. Now, where we've got stuff around like his eyes and things, I'm going to make sure that there's not too much water on my brush because it still has to be kind of like a dry brush. But I can come here and then create some detail definition. And this is the light gray that's at his little interior space. Now, it's in more shadow there than up top. So you got to make sure that you're capturing that. You want the lower part of his little cute front face to be more in shadow. I was gonna right here at the front of his chin. Mm -hmm. Get some more of the white into your gray mix and make sure that this is also highlighted. Mm 
That's really going to help his chin find its space. Right here. And I'm going to take a little of my burnt sienna and I'm going to let some of my yellow get into this mix for the nose. Use your um, zinc white here. Just on the toe of the brush, just on the tip here. Right. And then you have that nice little shadow as it goes down. On long the front of his nose is a pretty pretty intense bit of dark fur. But as it comes up the nose, it's not as dark, right? And then hopefully I'm trying to see like around the lines that I drew earlier where I just thought, you know what I could do to make my life much harder <laughs> upon my preference. That's what make my life much harder. Ah, uh, that a little bit of a highlight right here. Just trying to capture that dark line that should be going from the eye to the nose. So mm -hmm. capturing his little space there. We've got a bit of a kitty face going, do we not? Yeah. Nice little kitty face. Nice little kitty face starting to appear. It's just a bit of work. But you're not afraid of work. Eh. And I'm not afraid of work. And they're not afraid to work. It's okay to also kind of imply some tabby through here. Creating some of that there. Yeah. So again, what's our dark? Our dark gray comes from our ultramarine. We'll start with this. I'm here. And start to create the fur value. So underneath his chin, it's still in shadow. And then there we go. Starting to think about his little fur. Okay. 
Yeah, and getting that darker fur in to begin with. And the reason you're getting the darker fur in to begin with is so when you come to do the patterns, mm -hmm. it's just a little easier to do. I'm going to sip some coffee for a second. For a second. You can for a second. Well, actually, no, I'm going to do a little thing on his face, and then I'm going to sip some coffee for a second. This is just cool. adding the little highlights. Been quite nice. Has it been nice? Nice yeah. little relaxing thing. Nice little relaxing thing. We're gonna paint a cat. You're gonna paint a cat. I'm gonna watch a paint a cat. Okay. Now I'm gonna sip some coffee and have a moment to think. So he's the big deal for me in this piece. Like I just love his kittiness. So that was like a big thing for me. <laughs> That's gonna need a microwave, Luna Bella. All right. Can you microwave my coffee. She's up for it. Yeah, she's always up for it. She's Actually, super helping. I got to microwave my own. That's you got to microwave your own? All right. So I've got to plug in. That means I've got to flip over. You're going to, this is how I read the chat is I have an iPad that helps me read the chat. So um, it's giving me like flashes of like your battery is almost done. And so there's some things we need to work on on the face and that's good. I like to look at this overhead sometimes because that's when I get to see that the most. When you guys get to see that the most. Uh, question, any alternative for the grass comb brush? Yeah, um, this, any brush will do this to some degree. It's about how much water you have in it. Like if I take this brush and it's very dry and then I come in here and I, I load it with white and then I come right here you can see that I'm going to get the same kind of little effect going. Spark up a little bit of that, that little face there. And I want to kind of come in and maybe you can see you can do it technique wise. So it's not just you have to have a comb. But now you know if a comb was worth getting, you would know if you wanted to get it, right? I mean, that's sometimes the question. Is the comb worth getting, and would you want to get it? Deep philosophical questions. Well, I can sometimes try out or purchase a thing, and maybe, you know. To comb or, or not, not to, to comb. comb? This is the question. I'll let you guys know before you go out and... Just grab something. Without being thoroughly sure, right? Mm -hmm. Put in some tabbiness, right? I think there's some tabbiness right here as well. Maybe one down the center. I like tabbies. They're an interesting challenge to paint, but I really like them. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe because they're an interesting challenge to paint. Because it's not just the fur. You've got patterns, you know, in the same way that you might with like a tiger or something. Have that extra concern to worry about. I can come here and take my ultramarine and my uh, bird sand, and again, making that dark pet color. It's very important that we capture those little stripes for him to feel like the tabby that he is. He's tabby. Mm -hmm. uh, Colleen's like, I got to purchase a Lazy Susan. For doing pencil work, Colleen, it wouldn't be the worst. It, it's nice. 
if you can mount a lazy Susan to your tilt table, that's your best. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. right? you can turn and see. But his face is coming together pretty well. His face is coming along. Just adding a little definition to his sweet nose. Now I'm going to take my green. Maybe even a little of my burnt umber. And paint in the beginning of the eyes. And really what I'm looking at is I want to make sure that I don't lose the eye positioning. Like right there, I might like need to make that a little more open. And so that'll be what I'm playing with as I'm going around is the way that lines up. Hmm. You gotta make that line up correctly. I'll let that have a minute, but you can see that start to go in now. Oh yeah. Right, he's starting to be a thing. Now the other big thing that we've gotta deal with is we've got some paws here, right? So here we go, we've got our blue and our brown and it makes our gray that we like so much. And I should have, at this point, enough reference left to see the paw. Enough reference. Right, but the paws have structures, right? There's the claw structure and then there's the overall shape of the paw and you can't ever really escape that. Right? Whether you're painting a big cat or a domestic cat, Paws or paws. There's no escaping the paw beans. There's no escaping the reality of what goes on in a paw. So I find it's a good idea to sort of block in what you know you have to have, different segments for where the claws are housed. Because I don't declaw my cats in my paintings or my life. But I don't anything cats now because John's super allergic. But mm. still. I've had a lot of observation about pause so that's just something to think about when you're uh working with your your pause and then i'm going to come here and do a similar thing so that's our dark color our dark gray which is mixed with our ultramarine and our burn umber would you use a rake comb or a brush for his whiskers i would not i would use a monogram liner a script liner i would use something that gave me a lot of control over what was going on But definitely, definitely not a rake comb because it just, it would just do these weird, it would not do what you wanted it to do. I get why one would want it to do that. It just won't do that thing. Hmm. It just won't do that thing. I'm going to get a little more white into this. And again, this is about the housing, that claw housing. Even though it's going to be under fur, knowing that it's there is a super helpful thing to do. And as you remember, we paint the direction the fur is. So we've added a shadow to the paw and we've added a highlight and that lets it kind of be up like he's about to do that bat. That wonderful bat that, that happens. Mm-hmm. Now I can get this back out. You can use a fan brush. You can use your rake comb. I just want you guys to see this happen as it goes. You know how that works. And I do think that these are, if you're going to paint a lot of animals, um, I don't see Lindsay Herbert today, <laughs> but if she were here, she would tell you her favorite thing to paint is animals. 
And if you were going to paint a lot of animals, um, I would definitely, definitely invest in one of these. Because I think that they do a terrific job at what they do. And they let you focus on some very important things like the way that the fur likes to break up down here. Mm. You can really get into that. You can really get into the way that the fur wants to come up over like say a leg. So this is still a little wet, but we'll get into it in a second. I like to paint my darkest value of furs first. Like right here, this should be a very dark fur. It's in the shadow. Um, it's behind this paw and we would not see it that much in light. But other elements of his belly would be more in light. I'm still going to paint the darkest, darkest value of his furs and then come in and highlight where it is. Um, what comb are you using? This is a grass comb. This is a grass comb. I looked at the wrong thing. This is a grass comb. Oh. Um, uh, Christina G, this is a 3 8 filbert grass comb. Um, definitely, I'm not saying don't buy it on sale. Definitely buy it on sale. But I'm like, check the brush, guys. Check around. See who's running a sale. You know, get it off 40% off list or wherever it is. But it's just a fabulous brush. I would have it in my brush, bu brush bucket if I was painting a lot of animals, if I was painting a lot of grass, if I was painting a lot of those textures. I would want, I, I have it because I do those things. And um, we don't do this on Fridays. We don't introduce these new tools and products to you guys. But on Saturdays, on our big lesson, we do. I'm just going to continue to. Now, I am paying attention to the structure of his fur and the way that it lays down and how that's impacted, right? Mm -hmm. There we go. So he's starting to really come in. Look at him. When we put his eyes in, it's going to be a whole thing. Oh, yeah. I feel. So I'm going to come in with some highlights. And the first highlight is going to be, it's got a little bit of a, a highlight coming off over the, fabric here. You can see I can kind of capture that sort of. And look how we do. We leave those dark shadows, don't we? Mm-hmm. Super effective technique. Coming up this way. Even as you're coming back in, even in the shadow where he's got more shadows, those things are still true. And you're still tabbing him. He's still tabbied. I like how he's coming together. I, I won't do lie. Right here. This is what happens, right? We capture just a little bit of where that fur is in highlight. It's not all in highlight. A little bit right here. Now I'm not going to do all of his paw in that either. But enough. That the directionality of what's happening becomes kind of evident, doesn't it? Mm hmm And always come in and look at that cute little paw about to get up and bat. Who doesn't love that? It's pretty awesome. 
A little more gray there. Right here. Put some of this fur in that light, shall we? We're actually kind of wrapping up, guys. There's a little yeah. bit more to do, but we're going to fur them out and then eyes, and then we're kind of, we have completed our day. Mod Cad says that's really uh, fabulous, and Katie Kate says it looks like my old cat. And Casey McDonald, will you ever come out for more shorthanded brushes such as cat's dying and those table toppers? I am working on it really hard. I have some obstacles to that, but... I am working on doing that real hard. And it's something I would very much like to have because I think, you know, again, when I first did this, I sort of did what, you know, I knew I would need. Yeah. And didn't realize that most of my students would be painting at a table. Yeah. You learn. You do. As you're coming in and you're doing the the other little hairs, remember to, you know, make sure that there's that there's patterning, right? Because he is a patterned creature. Now, I'm going to get some dark color. I'm going to get some actual black on here now. Yeah. This will be very powerful. And I'm going to come here, back here, towards the back, and come back with this tool. With some of this much more dark hair. Kind of helping to find those little spaces. Yeah. You can see that we can get in and, and if there's hair that would be in deeper shadow, you can create a deeper shadow to define it. Now, let's get in and do the pause and finish the eyes. All right. So the pause, I'm going to go ahead and get into my black a little bit. And I'm going to make sure that they have kind of like deep shadow where a claw might be housed. Not completely, but just enough where we're catching it. Uh, they're also Posca pen brushes. Somebody suggesting, uh, Lynn is suggesting Posca pens. Oh, mm. you have lots of good. And pens right out there. now, it's uh, Liz Carson says the comb brush is ten dollars and thirty two cents at the brush guys. If you use the code at checkout, the Art Sherpa, that should give you an extra five percent off your total purchase. Now what I'm going to do here is like just definitely, definitely kind of just shade some of those. Little cat feet. Yeah, just to say, okay, we see, we see that. Okay, that's happening. Let's see how we're seeing his paws now. Yeah, this is real cute. I like this. I yeah. very, very, very much like this. Now I'm going to have to really work his eyes out. And that's, now I don't really see his eyes. I may have to use another reference. <laughs> Judy, we get you a... <sighs> All right.
sometimes what happens with uh, brushes right after you, especially round brushes, like more than any other brush, especially round brushes right after you rinse them out, um, one of the things that happens with them is that there's this hidden drop that gets on them and uh, definitely, definitely messes you up. So uh, I'm getting in some of this dark value. Often happens around the cat's eye and take that out. Just starting to have that. And I'm going to get my white, my gray, make a very light color. Trying to make sure their eyes have the right shape. We'll see how that comes out. We'll see how it works out. So I'm going to take a little of my yellow and my phthalo green, which is a very bright color. And I'm going to begin to talk about that around his eyes. Now, at first, it seems like I'm kind of like rounding them out. And actually, what it is, is I'm not even worried about any of the uh, pupil focal stuff. I want to kind of capture the, the shape. And then also where we see highlights and values that are like maybe glowing or brighter. So I'm going to get my zinc into that bright green. I'm going to make sure this back end of the eye is very lit. You can see that right there. I'm not worried at all. In a bit right here. And then looking at that, this actually will probably be at that far side. To not mess yourself up, you may want to put green through the whole thing. Otherwise, you'll give him a tiger pupil instead of a cat pupil. Oh, right. Because what we're really doing here is shading a marble, isn't it? Yep. We're shading the marble. Lots and lots of light. You can always come back with the green very easily. But you need to. And the other thing to realize is that there's this dark kind of outer circle, and I'm going to use blue. Let's get a little bit of our black in now, and first I'm going to go like this. And then I'm going to go like that, and I'm going to test out my theory of what will work here based on those two things. Now I've got to fix the line up the nose and the eye. There we go.
See how we did that there? Yeah. So that's really going to help that a lot. We've got some nice light in his eyes. We've got nice kind of like dark lining around it. And so really it's just down to getting a little bit of the white. And adding that right there. And that is what we have in the picture, but it isn't reading the way I want it to. No? No, a little bit it's not. So I'm going to take some back. A little bit. And go again. Let's look again. From a distance. A little better. A little better? Mm-hmm. There we go. Now on him, I want to add also a little bit of a reflection. The outside here. And to the inside here. Just a little bit. Sometimes it's just a little bit of a dance. Yeah. Yeah. You make a move and then it's maybe not exactly where you want it and then you move it back. And that's got to always be okay. Got to go back and forth and back and forth until you get it where you want it. You do sometimes. I go back and forth and back and forth. You get it where you want it. Now, some of you guys asked about whiskers, and I got to tell you, whiskers are my least favorite part of doing cats. Yeah? Yeah, because it's where a lot of stuff can go kind of wrong. But if you insist on doing them, I would highly suggest using fluid paint. I know I saw my monogram out here earlier because I was like, oh, good, it's here today. Let me look. And I would only use my monogram liner or a high-detail brush. Mm. Because believe you me, it's a detail moment. You can see that's quite a tricky line. This is one of those things where if one doesn't have the tool, the task can be really challenging. Yeah. I mean, keep in mind, Renaissance painters did this with like terrible tools. It's not like super impossible. It's just challenging. All right. Night chairman. Everyone who's hung in for this painting, I really appreciate it. It was a big project to do, but it's one I've been asked for again and again and again and again and again and again. And again. I get a little crazy with that whisker. I like it. Whiskers are turning out nice. Cats' whiskers tend to be as wide as they are so they can tell how big they are so they know they can enter something or not. Mm-hmm. I like to try to capture the little weird downward testing whiskers. I don't know what the downward testing whiskers are for. <laughs> They're for finding the foods. Is that the food whisker? Foods. Again, light is better. Light is better.
Sometimes little white highlights are nice. Thank you guys for joining us today. It's been really nice having everybody out here and hanging out. Let's look at the big boy and see where we're at. Are we right. done, guys? Okay. So the specialty brushes that we really talked about today were the Ruby Satin Filbert Grass Comb, which is, a, if you're going to do a lot of pets, I would recommend it. Holy. Mm. You need a lot of grass. It is a wonderful tool and in some ways works a lot better than this because this is too patterned. Oh, yeah. Right? So a lot of times people grab this, but what I'll say about this is this is too patterned. This is too like, these are my lines. You might as well just get the cheap fan brush because it does that naturally. Yep. Right? The cheap fan brush does the four fingers of death. <laughs> but anyways, but this is really a fabulous tool and it comes in different sizes and it's really only in the short handled. So it's just terrific. I think we've accomplished our task today. It was a big so task. We did not take on a small task. It was a big task, but I'm really glad that we did it. I want to congratulate. Who won our brush again? <laughs> Let's see here. I'll go back. It was, I think it was Annette. Congratulate Annette. And say, if you'd like another chance to win an Art Sherpa cat's tongue that we ship to you wherever you live. And it was... This brush right here, tomorrow, you can check the, the schedule. We are going to be doing a pop art cat. This is going to be a one who cat. It's real fun. It's cute. It's kind of like the fun cousin of this guy. I even put lemons in there. It's the yellow, yellow. And, um, and it had flowers. I don't know. A lot of fun things about it. Um, we're going to be giving away another brush, but you have to be there during the live show. You have to be entered with the correct answer. And you got to be there during the live show to win. Mm -hmm. um, and then also right after is going to be the premiere of our new series that we are so excited about. I am really pumped about it. And I think you guys are going to love it because I know we're all busy. I wanted to create something where five minutes you learn an art thing that, that that's the way I teach it. Not like some music and it says tutorial, but there's, I don't know. Not that. I actually explain what's happening, but it's five minutes. You can do, you can freshen up on a technique in five minutes. You could, if you're like, how do I paint that with a fan brush? I'm going to tell you how to paint all those things with a fan brush. Mm. And then you can take those techniques and like level them up. <sighs> thank this you guys. So oh, good. do we have the thank yous for the patrons? Oh, I, uh, yes, we do. I have to get them set up here. You just give me just two seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. Make Betty wants to know sure. today's three words for today's Let's was that John sure was John. Who the question for today, Betty was who is Dunham's, uh and it was like John co-host of the show, and then uh, tomorrow is about who Kevin is. So if you know who Kevin is, you already know how to enter for tomorrow's show, and uh, if you, I'm gonna tell y'all it's a kraken. It's not a kangaroo. It's not a crow. It's a kraken. That's tomorrow's question. You just have to have the, we're not going to try to mess with you. We just, you know, just be here and we'll, we'll do the thing. All right. Let's see if we could, uh, I'm still working on getting my data sources together. Murder, murder, That's murder, okay. Murder, 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 murder. Okay. So we had to go down to super chat. Today's the fifth, isn't it? So it, I don't know. Today. Yes. The fifth is the fifth. So I'm going to sip my coffee cause it's the fifth. So we're going to have to start with, let's see if I can make this do this thing where uh, Denise Powell says I'm not understanding what where, where the paw is that's the way it looks it's because the paw was foreshortened and coming forward to us and partially lifted and that's what we did we painted what was in the reference so I'm gonna see I'm gonna float you up <laughs> that's what we did to here so, so you one can... paw two paw because he's he's kind of on the side going eh uh, Barbara Summers, thank you so much. And I am feeling better. That migraine is gone and I'm so relieved because it was a lot. All right. Let's see. The next one was from Christine Iceland. Thank you so much. We are only able to do this show because of all the support from our community and patron support is a very important factor in that. Yes. Comments and shares and likes are super important too. So everybody is helping. But thank you, Christine, because, you know, we got to change out a cable. You're the one that helps us do it. <laughs> and SK. Thank you, SK. And oh, then Debbie wait. Roper. Debbie Roper. And thank and you. I, I misclicked. You so, misclicked? Yeah. And okay. then our last one was Poshkaline H. 
It feels good. I'm That's trying. a nice happy face. No, That's I a nice happy I've face. Got, I think I've got some stickers too, because I think we got some stickers. Oh, we did. Let me go over here to my sticker sheet. Let me find it. Where's my sticker I'm fine. sheet? Look, it got big. How big can it go? Oh, it can go it big, is. guys. If I go like that, it's like super big. Let's see. <laughs> this one is... Mm -hmm. I have to figure out what... Wild woman teaches you art! Oh, here it is. I go like this. I go... There it goes. Thank you, Stephanie Wilness. A sheep, a Sheba dog with sparkles in his eyes saying, my hero. That was Love what? them Shebas. They do chair up a chair, though. And then... Sylvia Bohr, thank you so much. I so appreciate cat. everything. And Kimberly Sullivan, thank you. Kathy Warren, thank you. And those were our stickers for today. Thank you for the super chat and the support. You can, If you ever want to know how you can support us, if, if, and only if you can, we have a patronage on our website. We are not on Patreon. Oh, that is not what we do. Where'd you go? I don't know where I went. You, you went, took me away. I took you away because and I was you're having such a good hair thing. I should do my hair like this right before every show. Wild woman teaches you to paint. Right now with that one. Where'd you go? You keep disappearing. There. I'm not. I don't put. <laughs> <laughs> I may have overwilded. <laughs> if this look appeals to you, completely continue on. Um, on our website, not on Patreon, you'll see Patreon tab. We have several levels of patronage. Bang's um, gone wild. Every, <laughs> every level of patron gets extra bonuses. We're actually very generous with our patrons. We try. So that's a great way to come by and patron us if you want to help us to continue to do the show. And um, also here in Super Chat or Stars on Facebook. These are all things that are helpful to do this. They do not impact your uh, chances for entry. You never have to purchase anything for the entry on our giveaways. Um, definitely want to congratulate our winners and good luck for everybody tomorrow. That contest is still oh, like that contest for tomorrow is open in the blog. Just scroll down and find the pop art kitty, and that is the correct entry. Mm -hmm. So, and we'll make sure we share that link uh, in <laughs> my hair is like really special in that show tomorrow. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye bye.